Good Saturday morning, everybody. Good afternoon on the East Coast. Good early morning to our friend Jennifer out in Hawaii. Good morning and good afternoon and good night, regardless of where you are around the world. <laughs> and that's a wrap. And that's See you next week. Did you miss the show? <laughs> Thank you for watching Thoughts Count Anywhere. Coming to you live from the Go Live Vegas studios in the heart of Las Vegas, Nevada. We got a lot going on, prepping for really the, this is really the go-home show for us for WrestleMania, isn't it? Hey, my buddy over there, Thomas Burnett, my brother from another mother, I hope you had your chicken soup. Can we soup. stop saying that, please? I hope you had your, no, I hope you had your chicken brother soup from last night. <laughs> stop. I hope you had your chicken soup last night and, uh. You're feeling a little bit better today, my brother. 702-329-6947 is our number. Give us a call. Give us your thoughts on anything pro wrestling. Good morning, Jennifer. We would love to hear from you. 1-855-502-4321. Press the number one as well. Numbers are there on your screen. And again, if you're listening to us on the Go Live Vegas mobile app or through Alexa, um, that's our numbers. There you go. Jot them down. 702-329-6947. Of course, we're watching our phones for the chat room as well as sending us a tweet using hashtag thoughts count anywhere. The chief to my right, Matt to his right, everybody accounted for. This guy. What? The last three weeks, you take notice, he's been duh, 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 duh. I think we need to check his teeth to make sure they're glued in. It ain't the teeth that you I'm know. missing, buddy. <laughs> I think so. It's not the teeth. Yeah. It's, other, it's, other it's all the other shit, huh? Gentlemen, how are we doing this week? Hey, I'm doing outstanding. Excellent. Glad, here, glad doing to be here with you. Doing pretty darn good. Just tired, but tired. we here. We are here for sure. A lot going on. Uh, big news yesterday about Triple H, which we'll talk about momentarily. Uh, a lot of news going on, some great news regarding the latest recipient of the Warriors uh, Award coming up at uh, WrestleMania and, and the Hall of Fame. We'll talk about that as well. And ESPN actually did a nice piece on, uh, on that, if you guys, I saw it this morning, on uh, the recipient. Um, Brooklyn's own Bro Chad Gaspar. That's right, for, for um, basically giving up his life to save his son. Uh, they, they, ESPN did a nice five, seven-minute piece on it. Uh, I was glad to see that, and uh, we'll talk about that as well. Probably one of those things that, um, you know, if you remember where you were when you got the news, but it was, it was a shock. But anyway, you know, I'll tell you what. This is, you know, guys, this is the last show of the first quarter of the year already. Oh, wow. It just seems like we just turned the corner to 2022, uh, right? Uh, are you yeah. saying we're getting old? No, I'm just saying time is passing. <laughs> <laughs> sun, sundials. Sundials, that's right. On cloudy days, what do you and do with the sundial? Rotary phones. That's like, no, how about the plug in switchboards? Uh, I remember them. But if you use a sundial for yeah. time, yeah. what do you do on a cloudy day? I don't know, Chief, what do you do? You can <laughs> still use it. How do you, if, but there's no sun to give you the sun. You, the you shade. use a gyroscope. A gyroscope? Absolutely. What the hell's that? That's one of those round things. That uses the magnetic field. Like a compass? Almost. Oh, okay. But it's on a bigger version. Gotcha. So you, He's got an answer so for everything. You, so you guys think Chief's stupid. Chief's not stupid. No, by no I means. Ne never said that. <laughs> hey, before we get into uh, story time with Matt, go to our website, thoughtscountanywhere.com. Let's quickly revisit. We got some new merch on the site. If our producer wouldn't mind, he'll switch to the laptop. We got, of course, here's the first one. Courtesy of Sean Hyde. We love him for it. Hopefully everything's going well. Working hard over there at the casino. Chief watches wrestling on the radio. Yes, I do. That is starting to sell like hotcakes. And then uh, right after, uh, really in honor of the NWO and Scott Hall in this design. Yes, thank you very much. TCA, thoughts count anywhere, both in the white and the traditional red of the NWO style. Now available and of course. I ordered mine. <laughs> did you, which one did you get, the red or the white? Both. Oh, you got one of each? Excellent. Yeah, I have, to get, I have to get on the site and order mine. Now that my wife's out of town, I can spend money. And then... Um, <laughs> I, and then know, I know how that feels. Uh, yeah, oh, wait a minute. Exactly. I better watch what the hell I say. That's right. Yeah, she, she jumped in last week. Yeah. Exactly. And then, good morning, William. And then, of course, there's a shirt in honor of our opening segment, which comes courtesy of some of the great stories downtown of Fremont Street, the ones that Matt can share with us. It is now time. It's a great segue for it. It is now time... For story time with Matt. 
Alright, it is now story time with the Enforcer, Matt Mom. Alright, here we go with story time. We didn't really have anything too crazy happen this week, but there was a funny story last night. Last night? I was working at Heart Attack Grill and these two white ladies and this white guy were acting... They were real drunk and they were acting all rude and cussing at the waitresses and they eventually had enough and they're like, give them their jello shots and get them the hell out of here. And I was like, all right, oh, gonna have got to, a call. I was just going to say, you're going to have to hold that thought up. We have a quick call coming in. Thank you for calling Thoughts Count Anywhere. Name it where you're calling from, please. Anderson, Nevada. And your name, please? Wayne Bernath. Wayne, how are you, sir? Good. Good. What can yeah. we What can we do for you here in Thoughts Count Anywhere? I like to book the client. He uh, wrote the book on uh, Ted Binion's murder. What What does Ted Binion's murder have to do with wrestling, sir? Oh, I didn't know. I I, I was given this number to call to book a client. No, not not this number. You're calling into a live wrestling talk show. But thank you anyway. Oh. We appreciate it. Thank all right. You. Hey, that's okay. We attract listeners from all over. Ted Binion's murder. That would be an interesting... Uh... My grandma knew him. Did you, did you really? Yeah. Maybe we'll get her on as a guest to share stories. <laughs> all right, so go ahead. So last night, a heart attack grill. Three people were in, two ladies and a gentleman. Jello shots. See, and, I was uh... listening. We eventually get them their jello shots, and I was like, all right, you guys got to leave. And then they eventually get out the door, and I look over around the corner, and they're like, Dad, don't go in there. Don't go in there. So I was like, all right, now you guys really got to leave. She literally looked at me and was like, are you just kicking us out because we're white? <laughs> I was like, what the hell did you just say to me? That was the first time I heard it that way. Wow. And That's I was like, crazy. you take your white privileged ass and go to McDonald's with the other losers. <laughs> no offense to anybody at McDonald's, by the way. We have to be an, to equal, all of them. We have to be an equal opportunity <laughs> offender around here. But anyway. I guess it takes me to shut up. Yeah. <laughs> Thomas puts in the what the hell is that? Well, listen, uh, what Thomas. I was kind of wondering. We're, we're get, we get calls from everybody around here. We're, we're an equal opportunity phone bank. Apparently, we book guests for Ted Binion's murder. I don't know. Okay, so that was this morning? Last night? Last night. Last night. So wow. you weren't listening. No, I was listening. No, you weren't. I was. It, it, it I was last was. night. Hey, by the way, two, we got. Two women and a guy went in the heart attack grill, <laughs> had jello shots. Cussed at the waitresses and Matt threw their asses out. And don't go in there because, or you threw us don't, out because we're white. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, by the way, we have a trivia question. Unbelievable. What do you want to give away as a trivia prize for anybody that gets it within the next, 20, within the next two hours without looking it up on Google? What do you want to give away? Let's name something. Want to, we'll order a shirt or mugs or something. What do you want to do? Do we have a piece of signed memorabilia we can donate? Yeah, I have a bunch. I can give them something. I'll figure something. Well, that's enticing. <laughs> oh, no, you put me on the spot. I, I would have brought some if you'd have told me like an hour well, ago. I, we just got the trivia question this morning. So I'll, I, tell, you know. I'll, tell, you, I'll, tell, you, I'll tell you what. <laughs> I'll, I'll sense the new shirt's up. Oh, okay. Matt's, Matt's shirt? Matt's shirt. Okay. I will go in and buy a Matt shirt, and we'll donate it. To, to the winner. To the of winner. the following trivia question. All right, there you have it. You will get a brand spanking new Storytime with Matt t-shirt, courtesy of Chief on behalf of TCA. If you answer the following, and you must call in. I'm not going to give answers away and except anybody in the chat room. Is that fair? We never do that. We want people to call in. Definitely. What, are you, what are you putting up there now? What is that? Oh, gotcha. Okay. I'm like, he's, <laughs> he's putting like a code to a combo lock on there. All right, here's a question. How many surgeries has Hulk Hogan had? Multiple choice. How many surgeries has Hulk Hogan had? Nine, 25, 29, or 40? Again, how many surgeries has Hulk Hogan had? Nine, 25, 29, or 40? You must call in 702-329-6947. Press the number one to answer our question. Um, I'll put a poll up as well. Okay. We'll put a poll up as well. And by the way, all right. Um, William Hudson, our good friend over at uh, TRC, says, I have an autographed photo I'll give away. So we've got something coming from Top Rope Collectibles as a giveaway gift. Pre so appreciate, appreciate that. that, Will. Okay, thank you so much. How many surgeries has Hogan had? 925, 29, or 40? You must call in to give us an answer. 
Any answers in the chat room or on Twitter will be disqualified. And since we haven't had a winner in less than 30 days, everybody except the people sitting at this panel are eligible to play. Damn, I was going to go around the corner. I'm not and eligible? In. What the hell? I'm no, on my phone right now. No, I, oh, listen. Okay. You know, oh, there's the poll just came up in my chat room. Let's see. So we can answer it. Uh, nope, I'm not playing it. You said I can't. Playing that's it. right. Well, I'm going to answer it. But the question is whether my answer is right or wrong. That's the question. No, I just put an answer in there in the chat, and the correct answer came up after my answer. Does that only happen for individual answers? Hope that didn't show up on, on the poll. Okay. All right. So here we go, gentlemen. 702-329-6947. Get a piece of signed memorabilia courtesy of Top Rope Collectibles. Here we go. Time for I Hear Voices. Ding, ding, ding. Wow. Rumor. <laughs> rumor. We should get a T-shirt that sells Ring the Bell on Time. <laughs> That's for sure. Anyway, rumor is... Du what the hell was that? Whose phone? Is that yours? It was me. Oh. <laughs> Turn it down. Turn it down. Uh, Thomas Burnett just next told me time, that... Next time it happens to me, you better not see Take the poll down, there. if you would, sir, because Thomas Burnett just says it shows up for everyone the right answer once, you, once someone answers the poll. So take that down. That doesn't work. Well, the, jump, the person on the phone line, I think, is the same individual that just called before. This is Thoughts Count Anywhere. Who's this, please? This is Wayne Burnett. I'm trying to get a hold of somebody. All right. Well, uh, Wayne, Wayne, this number that you're I calling is not the right number, so you're going to have to check with whoever gave you this number and see if it's the right one, okay? <laughs> Thank you. All right. All right. I did it. You did Put it. that in your book. I it did me. it my way. <laughs> uh, I got to get to issue two, issue two real quickly, don't I? Rumor is, okay, so Cody Rhodes is going to bring his whole presentation from AEW to WWE from the Gear to Music Pyro. Good idea? Is it him? Oh, we have another caller. Caller, thank you for calling. Who's this, please? This is uh, Ronald Young. Hey, how are you? What can we do for you this morning? I was calling to answer the question about how many uh, surgeries Hogan's had. All right. Did you look it up on the internet? No, I have not. Okay. Did, you see, did you see the false reporting of our poll on you, Facebook? You, you would, you, <laughs> no, I have not. You, okay, good. You would not lie to the chief, would you? No, sir. All right. All hit, right. hit it. All right. We have to be careful. Thomas is laughing too much, and we're making him cough. Okay, so <laughs> your answer, how many surgeries has Hulk Hogan had? 9, 25, 29, or 40? Your answer is? 40. Oh, no, <clears throat> sir. That is not correct. But I'll tell you what, it's a consolation prize. If you can send us your information through our Facebook page or website, we'll send you something just for calling in and, and for participating. It'll be something worthwhile, I'm sure. How's that? Okay, that'll work. All right, my brother. And where are you calling in from, by the way? I'm calling in from Florida. Florida. All right. We, we have reached the East Coast. I have goosebumps now. We've reached the East Coast. Hey, Ron, are you part of uh, Top Rope Collectibles, buddy? Yes, I am, too. Hey. I, now I know who it is. Well, and you can also, we just got a message up on the screen. All right. There you go. Well, William also put Ronald as one of his great friends, and I think he's only saying that yeah. because he's in the chat room. So you never know what he really says behind closed doors. Anyway, only kidding. No, it's true. No, I'm, only, I'm just busting, busting chops. Well, listen, Ron, we appreciate you calling in and giving it a shot. We will send you something from Thoughts Count Anywhere. How about the consolation prize? is the T-shirt. We can do First that. First person gets it right, we'll get the autograph piece from TRC. From, from Will, okay. Absolutely. So, we so can, I'll Ron, send you the shirt down. Yeah, so if you know how to connect with Chief, Chief knows you. We'll connect, get your address and information. We'll get you a shirt, all right? All right. Thank you, Ron. We appreciate it, sir. All right. Thank you. Keep listening. All right, all right. good morning, Sean. All right. Uh, good idea, bad idea. Cody brings over his whole shelf of stuff from AEW. Great idea. Chief? Everything except his wife, I'm okay with. <laughs> Is that another hubcap for you? <clears throat> no. No. But, I, I think but I think Brandy just needs to stay away from the wrestling business for a while and uh, concentrate on the little one and let Cody get started. And then maybe she can come in and uh, do a stint with the queen. There you go. I, that's not a bad idea. Give it a little distance. I like that if, if he's going to bring everything, I think he needs to create that distance from his last time with WWE 
to what he's established outside and bringing that here. So here's what I, here's the question I want to ask both of you: is If he's bringing everything from AEW to WWE, is Arn Anderson coming back to the WWE with him? Interesting question. What was what was Arn's Arn when he left and was released by WWE? Was it a what was the relationship? Was Arn was a producer. Yeah. No, I know. He no, was, I know that. Uh, but he was in good standing. Okay, that's what I mean. Yeah. Okay, oh, all right. Gotcha. Yeah, so yeah. if he was in good standing after being released, even as a producer, then okay, the door the door is possible. That it would be great to see that happen. It would be interesting. All right. Once again, our trivia question. Maybe we can post it up on the screen for us. How many surgeries has Hulk Hogan had? Nine, twenty-five, twenty-nine, or forty? Okay. First, you now have a thirty-three percent chance of getting it right. Only if you listen to the first one that it was wrong. Uh, if you're just tuning in, you still have 25%. Um, first person to get it right will get a signed autographed picture courtesy of Top Rope Collectibles. If you call in and you don't get it correct, that's okay. We got you back for participating. You will get a brand new story time with Matt t-shirt as seen on thoughtscountanywhere.com under the shop tab. Um, okay. Next topic. Rumor is WWE was going to invite the NWO to WrestleMania to help promote WWE 2K22 before Scott Hall's passing. That's crazy. I wonder if they were going to be involved in the show somehow, if they were just doing, like, access or something, but well, tragic of what happened. Then the question would be, would have Hulk been there based on his uh, current health say. status? Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I mean, you know, which unfortunately was Scott's passing and, uh, you know, Hulk's health. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't see that happening. Period. Well, it won't happen now. No. And I'm wondering if at if at WrestleMania or at um, the Hall of Fame night that they'll do another memorial or honor of somehow to, to Scott Hall again to for in honor of his memory. Just well, some of the news that came out, they might do that in like two years. Oh, in two years? Uh, Why is that? It took them two years to figure out how to do this for Chad Gaspard. So. Oh. <laughs> Gotcha. <laughs> that's that's uh, that's a good point. You know what? That's not funny, but that is a good point. I yeah, totally, absolutely. Totally agree with you. All right, with that, we're going to step aside for our first break. So we have plenty of time to get into all of the other wrestling news that's fit to talk about from WWE to AEW Impact. And, of course, we do have some pop culture topics. And Mr. Will Hudson says the NWO will live forever. There you go. Okay, we, you are watching Thoughts Count Anywhere. Remember the trivia question. How many surgeries is whole cat? 9, 25, 29, or 40? We are still looking for a winner. We will be right back right after these messages. One. It's not the worst podcast ever, is it? It's no. the best podcast. Thoughts Count Anywhere. All your wrestling news, all your hobbit, hey, all your gimmickry. Go on over and listen wherever your podcasts are downloaded. The Thoughts Count Anywhere podcast. I'm the big LG Doc Ellis. That's my endorsement. Booyah! Introducing everyone's arch nemesis, the struggle of the strain, the impurity of immunity, the throb of the job. He is past pain, anxiety, stress, tension. Introducing in your corner, don't pay for the hype for the packaging or the marketing. Quality is the only thing you should pay for. They are Planet Harvest Hell. Fight off your nemesis using premium handcrafted hemp wellness alternatives. Boost, workout, recover, relax, sleep, focus, repeat, and more. Planet Harvest Health is dedicated to creating affordable CBD products like gummies, lotions, recovery salve, and hemp seasoning blends and rubs. Visit planetharvesthealth.com forward slash TCA now for a limited time offer. And that's the bottom line because Aaron Phillips said so. This is John Cena. I just, I, just, I just wanted to send you a congratulations on your podcast. Thoughts count anywhere. Because indeed they do. Thoughts are important. I mean, what would they, we do without them? And how can they not count anywhere? I just wonder, is there a place that thoughts don't count? I can't think of one. Well, I just wanted to say thank you very much. Congratulations and good luck on the podcast. Thoughts count anywhere. Because they do. Good morning and welcome back. 
thoughts come anywhere. Good morning, Thomas. Appreciate you jumping in there. Remember, we have a trivia question. How many surgeries has Hulk Hogan had? Multiple choice, 9, 25, 29, or 40. Winner who gets the right will get an autographed signed picture of sorts coming from our friends down at Top Rope Collectibles. If you call and you don't get it right, if uh, Aaron, can you switch to the laptop if you don't mind? If Morning, just, Tom Crawford. Just for, <laughs> just for calling to participate, look what you get. You get, will get a story time with Matt t-shirt courtesy of TCA and Chief in particular. Okay, no, so just call T- in. TCA. All right, TCA. TCA. Courtesy of Chief's budget. Anyway, that's okay. Like, no, see many Liz's people get budget. To call in. <laughs> Liz, Liz's budget? Liz's there you go. budget. They named it right. <laughs> okay, let's get back to topics at hand. 702-329-6947. Okay, WWE to air two-hour WrestleMania pre-show on the USA Network, hoping to lure people over to the Peacock. Who's going to host it? It'll probably be the normal panel of guests. Booker T. Booker. Jerry Lawler. Yeah. JBL. And then uh, who's the guy from the radio Caleb show? Caleb Braxton, hopefully. But who, one of the guys from the radio. Oh, hopefully. Uh, the guy, one Stop. Of the, one of the guys. Um, I'm blanking. Pete Rosenberg. Rosen something. I don't know. Pete, Pete Rosenberg or Sam Roberts are usually on it. Those too. are the two. I like Sam Roberts. Yeah, those are the two I that like, are usually like on Caleb there Braxton. as well. Yeah. <laughs> so does Paul Haney. Caleb so does Paul Braxton, Haney. yeah. <laughs> He's hubcap. Oh, my goodness. Stop. She's like three foot nothing. She's not a tall girl. She's not. She's tall enough to ride this ride. <laughs> Space. Thank you for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Space Mountain. Space Mountain. <laughs> Styling and profiling. All right, two hours on Whee! USA. Um, marketing idea, of course, to try to get people to come over to the main card, get, in, get into watching it on, on God, Peacock. those are unbearable to watch sometimes. I know. It's all it's just recap stuff. I, and I, like, I've watched wrestling like every week. I know what happens. Just Not only every week. Watch. For years, you can tell what the pre-show is going to be. And they only put <laughs> one match on, maybe two matches as part of the pre-show. Yeah, but you know, as as I said to you earlier, the, the hype for this WrestleMania just hasn't been here. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to be stupendous. <laughs> what are you smoking? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> I, I, you know, you. I watched last night, and I, you know, Charlotte and uh, and and Ronda Rousey. And the way I'm talking right now is how Ronda Rousey talked last night in the segment with Charlotte. She has been getting a beating about how she's been on the mic since she's returned. Not that she was great the first time, but it's even worse now. But I, uh, you know, you just, I don't know. I, the, the one match I think could steal, and I said this the one, to the guys, the one match I think that could steal the show is the Usos against... Nakamura and uh, the guitar playing guy, Boogs. Boogs. yeah, Mr. Booze, yes. And uh, I think I really think that could be the steal of the show, or or possibly sh- uh, uh, Seth Rollins versus an unknown partner, unknown uh, opponent. That could steal the show, also. Seth Rollins versus the unknown Cody Rhodes. Well, you know, <laughs> what, whatever his name's going to be coming out. Versus the it, unknown American Nightmare. Is it going to be Cody Rhodes? Is it going to be Stardust? Is, you know, what the hell is it going to be? I think at be? this we, point, we don't it, know. I think all those other characters at this point, they have to go away except for what he's built I would hope via AEW. He can't just go to back troll to everybody, they should hit the Stardust music for like three seconds. Like they did with Dolph Ziggler when he came out with no, no music. Eventually, they would start his theme. Stop it, right? And then it was black, and then he just walked out? No, they just cut, like, three seconds of the Stardust music, and then the whole place goes black. And then they start with, like, the prelude of, like, when he came out in AEW and oh. a massive amount of pyro. and Gotcha. You gotcha. Know, I would hope, out of respect to Dusty, that this time in WWE, uh, Cody Rhodes is allowed to use Cody Rhodes. That's what I hope. Does he really need, though, the Rhodes name? People obviously know Out who re- he is and the relationship and well, all of that. The well, only reason he wasn't allowed to use it in AEW for a while is because it was owned by WWE, right. but now he's in WWE, so... Right. Well, you know, his brother uses the real name, Runnels. Right. So... I still want to know what WWE promised this guy. Cody? The moon. <laughs> How do you give up... The moon. How do you give up an executive vice president job... 
and everything else to go back to play second fiddle to Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar, no matter what position you're in, <laughs> you are not getting higher than those two. Right. That's true. It's all about business. That's right. What's best for business. Yes. Um, I just want to mention, I want to just respond to something Tom Crawford put in there about WWE Evil, a new series that is on the Peacock Network. And uh, we were talking about it actually before we went on the air. So we will actually talk more about that, Tom, <laughs> as, we, as we progress um, throughout the show. But yes, uh, the first episode had Hulk Hogan. Then it was The Miz, and then it was Sasha Banks. We'll talk about that in full a little bit later on because Matt also saw the first episode. Okay, so WrestleMania two-hour pre-show is there. Um, let's go to the big news after that. A man who is a mainstay at, for, in WWE for many, 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 many years, many, many, many main events at WrestleMania, and you know the game himself. We know about his health issues last September. Uh, he had the heart issue. Um, we saw him months later finally show up in a suit, taking the tour of the uh, construction of the new Titan Tower, so to speak. Uh, and now it's come out that he is retiring fully from in-ring competition because he has a defibrillator. And um, well-deserved retirement. I mean, yeah. it, he certainly had he definitely, definitely a first-time you know, Hall of Fame entry standalone. We had that discussion last week. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, your thoughts on him really just calling it quits with no fanfare, per se. I mean, because of his health, you have no choice. But give me, give me your thoughts. How would you describe Triple H's career and what he's meant to wrestling or to you as a, a guys as a fan? Triple H is, like, one of the top guys, like, when I was growing up. No, it was, like, he was always hated and he was always perceived as, like, the guy with the golden shovel that buried everybody and buried everybody backstage. But then you see everything he did with, like, NXT and basically gave us the whole new generation of everybody we loved and still love to this day. But I think he's going to be a lot more known for the stuff he's done behind the scenes than he is in front of the camera, even though he was one of the greatest of all time, like heels in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. Chief. I'll defer my comments to, uh, the Chiefs rant. Okay, which will be coming up here in a couple of minutes as well. If I may. Sure. sure. Um, yeah, listen, Triple H defined, you know, came at, started in WCW, Hunter Hearst Helmsley, came out with that royal regalness, the, the bow and, the, and all of that stuff, um, and then just obviously hit his stride when really the name change when he went to Triple H from the Hunter Hearst Helmsley, then the whole storyline with him and Stephanie early on which really just skyrocketed in the career matches and, and you know, the, the, the scene of, of uh, the match between Triple H and Undertaker where Sean was the guest referee. And, there, and that was the night that Triple H blew out his, his thigh, wasn't it? His quad? Burned uh, it out. Was that not that night? Well, the only reason I'm thinking is... I I'm think just that thinking, was in Saudi, I think, he got hurt again. No, not recently. I'm talking... I think it was a WrestleMania Back. match, wasn't it? Uh, Maybe yeah. it, was. it was. It could have been another match, but the way that the three of them just kind of... Because it looked like, you know, uh, Hunt, uh, Undertaker was on one side, Sean was on the other, and Triple H was kind of draped a little bit yep. over them. But the three of them stopping on the top of the ramp and just kind of acknowledging the crowd, that, I, you know, just from a visual of what those three individuals meant from the Attitude Era and yeah. really how the, the passing of the torch from those three individual great ring performers to the next stage, I think is an image that will that really is burned in my mind of what the three together, but certainly Triple H when you think of DX and all of that stuff, and really the the blueprint and the thumbprint he had on the original NXT Black and Gold, uh, producing many of the stars that uh, you know that we know today are in the, not only here but in, in AEW and such. So it's it, cr quite a career. I wish it. You know, you want to go out on your own terms. You never want to go out on stuff like this, but. At least he's smart enough to know. I mean, could you imagine, God forbid, the defibrillator went off mid-match? <laughs> yeah, God but forbid. he's like one of those old school guys since he was like trained by Killer Kowalski anyway. He'd be one of those people that would want to go out on his back to the count of three and not like... He'd want to go out putting like the next person over. Right. Well, I agree. Absolutely. So, uh, but he is back in the office, so I guess he's okay doing office, you know, his, his office duties, which... I guess will more or less be uh, nine to five and less strenuous. I don't know how that's possible working in the WWE, uh, but uh, nonetheless, uh, 
We want to congratulate him, and obviously, great career would be an understatement using the word great. Um, and uh, we look forward to whatever he can do to continue putting a mark on the world of pro wrestling. So, okay, and then uh, real quickly, uh, before we go to the Chiefs rant, just want to reiterate the fact it was announced, we talked about it at the top of the show, Shad Gaspard is going to get the Warrior Award during the Hall of Fame uh, presentation this week uh, for uh, saving his, his son's life while giving up his own two years ago while they were swimming off of Ventura Beach in Cali. Um, ESPN did a nice piece that I caught this morning um, uh, showing that and his, yeah. the, the video montage. And uh, what can you say about a man who's willing to give up his own life to save somebody else, in this case, his own flesh and blood? Yeah. That's the ultimate as far as I'm concerned. And the WWE did it right. Unfor you know, last year we didn't have um, um, the Warrior Award um, due to COVID. Mm -hmm. um, I, I totally agree with your comments, Aaron. Uh, you know, Shad's missed. He was a good, good performer in the ring. Mm -hmm. Big guy, big guy. Uh, you know, as uh, as parents, what's our responsibility to take care of our children? Mm -hmm. That's what he did, and unfortunately, he gave up his own life. And I'm glad to see. Uh, I'm glad to see that he's going to get the award finally this year. Right on. All right. Uh, real quickly, we're going to recap what our trivia question is, and then we're going to go to our Chiefs rant segment, so giving time for our producer to get the intro ready. How many surgeries has Hulk Hogan had? It's a multiple-choice question. 9, 25, 29, or 40? Give us a call at 702-329-6947 after the Chiefs rant, if you can. If not, just call us whenever. Winner will get an autographed picture coming from the guys at Top Rope Collectibles, an autographed, we don't know who or what, but we'll get something over to you. If you call and you don't get it right, you will receive a shirt. Story time with Matt, courtesy of Thoughts Can Anywhere, just for participating. It's like a, participa a participation trophy. And do not <laughs> look it up on the internet. Do not, yes, yes, correct. So you have a 25% chance of winning, unless you heard the first Carla who didn't get it right, then like you said earlier, Matt, you had 33% chance if you heard what the wrong answer was. <laughs> With that, it's now time to watch Chief's temperature go up <laughs> during his three minutes of fame. Dun, dun, dun. It is now time for the Chief's rant. Good, <laughs> shit. Good morning, fans. It's the Chief. My three minutes of fame is now two minutes and 50-some seconds. <laughs> Making, Matt made me laugh. Anyway, serious note. Um, I'm going to put him in, in the uh, category of uh, one of the greatest of all times, in my opinion. And I said one of the greatest. I didn't say the greatest, one of the greatest. I listened to this segment with um, Stephen A. Smith on the uh, on Triple H talking about his retirement. And the one thing that stuck out to me, and we make light of it sometimes, but the one thing that really stuck out to me is his three daughters, 15, 13, and 11, they really didn't understand what was going on with Triple H health-wise. Okay, this got nothing to do with wrestling. This is family. This is Triple H making the decision on what he needs to do, what's best for family, not the wrestling business, but family, okay? The man now, as was stated earlier here, has a defibrillator. And for all of you that don't know, heart attacks aren't fun. Trust me, I know I'm speaking from experience. I got three stents in my heart. So, uh, you know, all the fans out there that are kind of upset about Triple H uh, retiring, 
get the fuck over it. It's about his life, not about the wrestling business. Don't beep me out right now, please. It's not about the wrestling business. It's about him and his family. So think back about all the good times that you saw Triple H, you know, as Matt alluded to earlier, uh, s some type of foreign object. The first thing that came to my mind was his freaking sledgehammer, and he was good at using it. And now that he has to retire due to medical reasons, I wish him the best. I want to see him continue. I hope he goes somehow back down to NXT in some type of a capacity or Shawn Michaels gets in the damn car and drives to Triple H's house and they discuss wrestling of NXT because NXT's bunch of garbage since he's left and I'm going to leave it at that today this is chief over and out right on right on Thomas Burnett puts into the chat room real real quickly he says his dad granddad and great-granddad uh, all passed away from heart disease we're talking about Triple H and so it's obviously lineage that um, you know lineage and high blood pressure yeah. huh yeah, well, yep. genetics, you know? Yes. Um, it was crazy. I was looking at, like, social media last night. Mm -hmm. You would have swear to God, like, Triple H died or something. Thank you, Matt. Just the way it was, like, going on and on. Like, thank you, Triple H, this and that. And I was like, I was like, hold on. Did he retire or did, like, he die? Because I've seen more Triple H posts in the last 24 hours than I did Scott Hall. Yeah. And that's kind of nuts. But Triple H is still in the corporate office. Still making the future for the company, and he may be missed in the ring, but I'm sure he's going to pop up here and there because every legend does. Well, WrestleMania access is coming up. I mean, how much effort does it take to sit behind the table and sign autographs and talk to people if they wanted to do that? He'll still, I, I would imagine he would still represent WWE in a public uh, place somehow. You know, not wrestle, but at accesses, autograph signatures, all that stuff, you would think. I, I would say... He'll do what he can do. It's, it, you know, let's face it, fellas. It's hard when you've got the defibrillator in you. And like he made light of. He'll make a shocking return. Somewhere. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, was trying, I was trying to think of how to say it, but you hit it on the head. Make a shot, yeah. Um, he might zap the audience one day. <sighs> You know, <sighs> you know, it's funny. You have no heart with that, you know, those you, kind of jokes. You know, it's funny, though. I'll give you two, two stories real quick. Uh, I, was going down, I was going down jury duty uh, down at the 8th District, and, they, you know, you got to go through the uh, um, metal detector. And I told the guy, I said, hey, I said, I'm going to set this damn thing off. And he said, why? He said, there ain't nothing wrong with you. I said, okay, wait. And I walked through and I set it off. He said, I, you know, empty your pockets. I said, it ain't my pockets. It's the metal that's in my heart. That's what set it off. And I've got a letter that when I fly on airplanes, I've got to give to them to let them know that uh, I can set the alarm off real quick. And that's, and, you know, he's he's going to be in the same boat, so... You know, we can laugh about it, make light about it. But, again, the one thing that really struck me, and we look at the professional wrestlers as, you know, sports entertainers, whatever you want to call them. They give us, the fans, enjoyment. But it goes back to them being human beings first, and they have family. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's about. So, absolutely. Um, as a father of twin daughters, <coughs> and he's got uh, also, you know, his girls, he's got three girls. Um, girls are special, and you want to be, listen, any child is special, and you want to be around your family as much as possible. So I to totally respect his, uh, his decision. Um, Thomas Burnett had me, Chud. Do you see Thomas's comment in there? Hey. Is he going to be the new Shockmaster? Yeah, well. <laughs> you win, Thomas. You win. <laughs> All right. If you, for you fans that don't know Thomas, Thomas has sat 
next to me and next to Aaron on yep. the, in the chair here. So longtime supporter. Of and us. and I, I you, you bonehead. So we'll let, we'll let he can, he can get that. away with that. <laughs> By the way, on your screen right now, you'll see a QR code to our newest sponsor and advertiser here at Thoughts Count Anywhere, Planet Harvest Health. Just get your phone up there, zap that QR code. And then what will happen is, is that you will get a, what? Zap. I know. I just realized no, what no, I no. said. Is that what you chuckled about? No, no. I did, not, I did not plan that. I swear I did not plan that. It was purely accidental. That will take you direct to a link that is special for Just Our Thoughts Can Anywhere Universe. What you'll get is if you use code TCA25, you get 25% off any order of products. And then as a VIP customer through TCA, you will also get free shipping on any order, $60 or more. So take advantage of it. You want to live healthy. You want to take advantage of some great products. You've got everything from salves to gummies, even seasonings for your food that are good and, and will be healthy for you. Take advantage of that QR code and our friends here at Planet Harvest Health, who, by the way, I'm trying to arrange to get them to pop on in a couple of weeks to do an interview with us, as we promised all of our sponsors. Cool deal. Right. Hey, uh, my, our buddy, Mr. Will Hudson. Yes corrected the chief okay last year titus won the award but he was given the award at wrestlemania in front of people right correct well who got it the year before because they were in, in uh, tampa bay last year yes the year before when they were in the pandemic in the thunderdome i'm wondering did they I, i'm just trying to remember I, I if know. an award was given that year hey will am i am no I, they did the two years of hall of fame that Hall of Fame they did. So did that mean, did that automatically mean the Warrior Award was probably skipped too? Probably. I, 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 William's looking it up for us. Well, give it, so. get the chief out of trouble, will you? <laughs> That's almost impossible. I was going to say, he's, ta <laughs> he's tagging out is what he's doing, and he rarely does that. All right, uh, let's step aside for our second break of the first hour, and then when we come back, we got more news and topics to go over in the WWE. We'll jump around. Something interesting came up last night, which is sort of on the run sheet. We know that uh, Gable Stevenson may be making an appearance at WrestleMania, but there's another wrestler that's using the Gable name. Wondering what that's going to mean for Chad Gable. How many surgeries has Hulk Hogan had? 9, 25, 29, or 40? Give us a call at 702-329-6947. Give us your guess. Press the number one to come into us. The winner will get a signed autograph picture coming from the guys at Top Rope Collectibles. If you call in and you don't get it right, you will get a Brand new shirt of story time with Matt, courtesy of Thoughts Count Anywhere. Stay tuned. Please support our sponsors. We'll be right back. This is the story of one man's incredible journey from 350 to 200 pound weight loss and his mission to help and inspire others. Aaron Phillips. People are praising Aaron's new book with five star reviews. Aaron's various humorous and wildly entertaining stories portray his rise as a sports announcer his encounters with exotic and irregular entertainers on the Las Vegas Strip through his long-running Vegas Unwrapped radio show, and his contagious and positive style of pursuing success. Call now or visit our website or Amazon now to get your copy of Let My Voice Speak to You, stories from a Hall of Fame radio personality. Order now. What's up, man? It's your boy, Seth Fatu. I'm here with my man, Big G. I need you to check out the podcast, Thoughts Count for Anyone. This is the essential character, EC3, on behalf of my dear friends and Thoughts Count Anyone. The podcast for your mind when you need deep thinking about all things sports and entertainment. Hello, this is Martin Casals, a.k.a. Marty the Mob, and you're watching Thoughts Count Anywhere podcast. Enjoy! <laughs> this is Impact Wrestling's Dash and Chris Bay, the ultimate finesse, former finesse division champion, and you're listening to Thoughts Count Anywhere podcast. Thoughts Count Anywhere. Y'all watching it. This is my new tag team partner, Steve-O, a.k.a. Zeus, from the hit movie Friday, and from No Holds Bar. Hi, I'm Sean Devari. Listen to Thoughts Count Anywhere for all your wrestling news. Hey, what's going on? This is Axe, and I'm smashing the devil in and we want to invite you to watch every Saturday morning. Thoughts count. Anywhere. 
Introducing everyone's arch nemesis, the struggle of the strain, the impurity of immunity, the throb of the job. He is past pain, anxiety, stress, tension. Introducing in your corner, don't pay for the hype for the packaging or the marketing. Quality is the only thing you should pay for. They are Planet Harvest Hell. Fight off your nemesis using premium handcrafted hemp wellness alternatives. Boost, workout, recover, relax, sleep, focus, repeat, and more. Planet Harvest Health is dedicated to creating affordable CBD products like gummies, lotions, recovery salve, and hemp seasoning blends and rubs. Visit planetharvesthealth.com forward slash TCA now for a limited time offer. And that's the bottom line because Aaron Phillips said so. Wear, I wear glasses. You know, I can see. <laughs> Welcome back to Thoughts Con Anywhere. Come to you live from the Gold Life Vegas Suits in the heart of Las Vegas, Nevada. The Chief, Matt, and myself. <laughs> Thank you, Thomas. I'll make sure that message gets to that voiceover guy. <laughs> hey, we still don't have a winner for our trivia contest. How many surgeries has Hulk Hogan had? It's multiple choice for crying out loud. 9, 25, 29, or 40. And you can't look it up on the internet. No, you it. cannot. Let's, let's uh, be fair about this. Right. And well, even if you did, it's not like we have a way of proving it. Yeah, well, the Chief's <laughs> going to ask you if you did. And if I'll you give lied, you a halfway and if you it lied a little chief, and it's not a lot. <laughs> and you lie to Chief. It's you, somewhere in between 5 and 41. Yes. So. Um, hey, which wh- one of these is my button? Should be Number the s- two? second from the left, I believe. De, 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 de. Yeah, I can see that. Ahoy, Thank ahoy. You. Carlos must be eating chocolate chip cookies. Chips ahoy, ahoy from Carlos. Our My good man, down Carlos. There. Absolutely. 702-329-6947. Call us. The winner will get an autographed picture courtesy of our friends down to Top Rope Collectibles. William Hudson, Ben Bowman, and the crew down there. By the way, I got my lunchbox the other day in the mail, guys, and I absolutely love it. I, Did you put it up in the closet hell yet? No. Well, she, <laughs> the, she, the white, lie, no. Don't no, 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 lie to I'm, me, I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell don't you the truth. I'm going to give you the story right now. <laughs> it came in the mail, I think it was Thursday. Well, Thursday night, I had to take my wife to the airport for a red-eye flight to go back to Tampa. She's there visiting uh, with, with our girls and stuff. For hey, five Will, days. make sure you listen to this That's story, right. buddy. So, so usually <laughs> when I get the pictures and stuff in the mail and my wife beats me home, I bring them in from the mailbox and I put them on the highest shelf possible in the garage. <laughs> where I know she, where I know she can. For yeah. those who don't know, my wife is 4'11 and 3 quarters. So that night, I managed to grab everything out of the garage and I ran upstairs to my office because she was in our bedroom packing. So I just quickly ran into my office. I put everything on the chair in my office first of all it, it was, was funny this moment he realized he <laughs> fucked up no 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 <laughs> no but it was funny because he packed this the, and by the way it was a lunchbox of hogan and andre the giant oh yeah from no. from that match oh yeah and it, was, it was a beautiful yeah you were online when you saw it oh yeah so I, the funny thing is, is they packed it in a box of the ice cream cones with the uh, sprinkles uh, i want to say dum-dums but it's not, i don't i don't think that's it and i saw the box i was laughing hysterical because of what the box itself was but it was nicely wrapped. It was done. It was a beautiful piece. So I waited to open it until Friday when I knew my wife was already out of the state. Friday, <laughs> yesterday, <laughs> I opened it all up. We know who rules in the house. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So, yeah, I got Four that. Four foot 11 and three quarters, huh? Okay. <laughs> she might as well be nine feet 11 and three quarters. <laughs> That's for sure. And then I got uh, what sign piece? I got a picture that I order, uh, got from them on that same buy, but this week. Another Chelsea up, Green? No, it was not, actually. Uh. I forgot who it was. <laughs> but I did pick up a great piece this week, didn't I? Oh, yeah. Demo- oh, demolition. Yeah, nice. it was awesome. I awesome piece. Picked that up, and uh, I'm, I'm, I know it got shipped. And and listen, I'm I'm going to say this because they talk about it all the time. We got, and I know I'm digressing off of no. our script. No, no, no. But you know, when you do business like this with people like that, where their whole life not their whole lifeline. I mean, I'm, I don't know if they have other jobs or other ways of income. But this is a business. Yes. When you buy something, freaking pay the bill. Okay. So when when I buy stuff. Damn, okay. I'm not even get to rant on that. No, shit. I'm going to rant on All this right. one. You I can. Like you it. got your rant, okay? <laughs> but you've done this one before. You know? Oh yeah. So I'm going to tell them right afterwards. I know they're going to send me the invoice. I know they're going to do it. A couple of shows ago, for whatever the reason, they had they were going to wait a week. They did a show on like a Monday, maybe it's because of the holidays. And the guy said, "We'll invoice the following week." I messaged him individually. I said, "Guys, 
Send me my invoices now. I want to pay you. I just want to get it done. I don't want to think about it for a week. As soon as I got the invoice from the guys on, when, when was that show? Tuesday night? Whatever yeah. it was? Tuesday night. Wednesday. Yes. Wednesday, they message me through Facebook, and uh, I get my numbers. I pay them right away. We have a caller coming in right now. Huh? That's you testing. What the hell are you Belay. doing? Belay. Oh, phones anyway. and the phones Belay. aren't working, so Belay we're starting to test them. Belay anyway. Aaron's list. Huh? Phones are... Sean, they are working. We already took a call. Um, we already took a call earlier today, so try again if you don't mind. I put, uh, I put you on the blacklist, Sean. You can't call. Yeah, we... <laughs> Tyrus Burnett says the number is now out of order after the whole Ted Binion debacle from earlier. Anyway... So, um, yeah, so I pay, listen, I pay, the, I'm not on every show that they do because I can't. That guy sounded like he'd be the best audio guest on this planet. <laughs> I would like to guest. Well, well, let's put him and Ronda Rousey in a, in a promo battle off. <laughs> um, I so, was just wondering. Oh, if I think we got it. I think we got it. Thank you for calling. Is this Mr. Sean? Finally. Where have you been, man? He's been working. I've been attempting to call for about. 20 minutes since Tom has called. And every time I press one, it continues the messenger and hangs up on me. So I still don't think two weeks later that Mr. Producer is allowed to have a name yet. He still needs to be Mr. Producer. <laughs> Mr. Addison. How are you guys? Wait a minute. If, if we lose you, just it's not us. It's our producer. No. <laughs> oh, no. That's Mr. Producer hanging up on me because I called him Mr. Producer. I got yeah, it. Oh, there you go. So what's up, bud? <laughs> not much, man. Been working like crazy. How are you guys doing? Doing, doing good, Carlos. We don't have an answer yet, but Sean is on the phone, and I don't know if he's going to answer the question or just wants to chat, so hang tight. Well, well, I, I'm going to guess All right. Hogan's had, since Thomas said 40, and that was a no, I'm going to guess 25 because in 1998 he had had 23. Well, Mr. Sean, guess what, my friend? You are ding, ding, correct ding. at 25. <laughs> that information, by the way, came from his daughter, Brooke Hogan, and, uh, yeah, he had 20, he's had 25 surgeries, closing on seven years old. And, of course, over the last number of months, confirmed by both um, Jimmy Mouth of the South, and I think Ric Flair even posted that Hogan's health is not good right now. Um, but, yes, yeah. he's had 25 surgeries. I and mean, you think for a guy who did nothing but leg drops and, and kicks that you wouldn't have that many surgeries necessary because the type of wrestling that he did – it's not the high, high flippy shit because of his size. Well, probably. Yeah, too. but you think about the impact and the size of him. True. And those uh, leg drops. Very true. The back the hips, that spine. The legs. Very true. Yeah. All right, listen. So here's probably 22 of the surgeries was due to him picking Andre up yeah. at WrestleMania <laughs> That one three. night. Yeah. Exactly. 22 of them were that night. So uh, top, the folks at Top Rope Collectibles uh, have donated an autographed picture uh, on behalf of the winner. So, um, do you know, do you follow the guys at TRC? Yes, sir. All right. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I know, uh, William is listening. At least he was. We'll make a connection between the two of you so that this way he can send you the, the prize right direct to you since you guys are already connected. Okay, cool. Awesome. The hey. other kind of trivia thing we've been going through this morning is the warrior award. Yes. So you were correct. Titus O'Neill won it in 2020. And I believe that was the last crowd they had. Um, last year was Rich Herring. I don't know if you guys remember that. No, Who's sir, I do player? not. I do not. Who's that? Who's that? Uh, who was that? I would have to look who Rich Herring is up online, to be honest. But I haven't looked anything up online because uh, Chief keeps threatening people. <laughs> so I, I, I didn't go online at all. Uh, wasn't he that football player that was, like, paralyzed or something to that? Uh, oh, no, the that... kid who played for Rutgers? Yeah, I think so. Was that the kid who played from Rut for Rutgers a couple of years ago? Uh, not a couple of years ago, about 10 years ago? No, that that was Eric Legrand. That's right. Yeah, that, my, that's let right. Me, let, me, early. Let, me, let me look this up real quick. Well, I thought, I, I thought that uh, the last award in front of a live audience for the Warrior Award was last year G at Raymond James Stadium because they were live in front of people for SummerSlam, uh, for WrestleMania. It was the year before when they were in the Thunderdome. Yeah, you're right. You're so right. That's the one I, I think we're, we're just kind of curious about was the 2020 uh, award since they had WrestleMania, obviously when Drew McIntyre won uh, in front of nobody, uh, as to whether don't even remember if they did a Hall of Fame stuff that that year or not either. Um, yeah. So that that's the one that we were just kind of kind of uh, curious about. William Hudson puts into the chat room, Sean, reach out to me and he'll take care of it for you. So you guys <laughs> connect together 
and he'll take care of sending, sending you the winning award for your answer of 25 correct surgeries for the Hulkster. Awesome. Sounds good. All right, my I friend. I hope you guys are doing well. Hey, are you, go, are you going to the show next Sunday or the, uh, um, Sunday? Not 100% sure yet because I don't know what my schedule is yet. All right. Well, I've, I've got something I got to give to you. So when I see you, okay. uh, uh, so let me know. All right. Uh, yeah. Are you catching your Sounds breath? Good. Are you catching a breath? I'm surprised you're not at the sports book with the Elite Eight stuff going on. Uh, I got off. Uh, I go in at three today. I was off. Uh, I worked uh, the last two days um, pretty much all, pretty much by myself um, oh, wow. for the Sweet 16. Wow. Um, so, yeah, I, I go in today. And, do you make, do you uh, make yeah, tips? Let for, it continue. Do they, give you bet, do they give you tips for taking bets? Like you would at a uh, table? Yeah, we take tips. We, we share them among all the riders. Okay. Well, there so, you go. Tip your writers. The, uh, last week in the, the four days we did, the, uh, they told us that was the – well, they said it on the news. It was a, kind of a record for as much sports betting we had gone on in Vegas for the March Madness. Wow. And then, um, you know, my supervisors at work told us that was, that was the most tips they had ever seen. So wow. we had a pretty good week last week. That's great. That's hey, great. I only got one thing to say. Go yes, St. Saint- Go St. Peter's. Absolutely. Right? Jersey my money's product. been on him the whole my money's been on him the whole way. I think this next game will be a little rough, but I'm gonna go with him again. Right on. Now, Sean, thank yeah, you, buddy. But North Carolina don't All right, have, brother. North Carolina don't have no seven four boy either. Nah. So, All right, think, Sean. Stay safe, buddy. Shot. We appreciate you. All right, you. man. You guys be good. I'll talk to you later. You got Love it. you, Thank brother. You. See you downtown. Uh, Th- Thomas Burnett uh, and William both, and William did clarify that at last year's WrestleMania, since it was the first time in front of fans, they actually inducted both the 20 and 21 class last year. Okay. Now that he says that, I, I, re- I re- yeah, I re- on stage, but <laughs> did they do anything for the Warrior that year? That's the thing. I'm, that, try- well, I'm trying that's what we to, need look to look it up. up. All right, all right. Well, our crack staff is, uh, is rusty at crack staffing <laughs> since I don't have the sports show. All right, we have a couple of minutes left, so let's quickly run. Wiley's looking that up. Huh? Let, nothing. Don't worry about it. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Let's see, what else? After weeks and weeks of promos, it was announced Raw Veer will come to Raw April 4th. Does anyone still care? No, especially when I saw last night or this morning that they may give a name change and an appearance to his gimmick anyway. Nobody cared was even Jinder Mahal. Nobody cares two months later. I want Elias back. That's the guy they're really screwing around. Uh. Jeez Louise. Biggie and... Fr- uh, Speaking of which, what happened to him? Is he injured or no? There's, or he's just, there's nothing for him, or he's and, just down eating at the buffet. There's nothing for him, and apparently the last story that I saw was is that when they got him away from the guitar and the long hair, they changed his image and he looked too much like Randy Savage, and so so Vince oh. nixed that return. So now I don't know what's happening with him, but I wish he would come back very soon. Okay. There's nothing for him, but there's plenty of time for this Tazawa and Tamina Snuko. Uh, love thing, which is the fast forward button can't work fast enough on my TV. Put something here, dude, courtesy uh, of the Twitter machine. Future WWE will should have a Scott Hall mem- Memorial Ladder Match on the house show. That's a great idea. That's a really good idea. It's funny you mentioned about uh, that whole storyline because I heard this comment yesterday. The 24-7 belt is supposed to be defended 24-7, no matter where, no matter what, right? Not no more. Why would they have a 24-7 non-title match for that belt this past week? That makes no sense. WWE booking at its finest? I don't know. And, yes, it was Rich Herring, by the way, a uh, longtime WWE employee who got it at 2021. So there you go. Thank you, sir. All right, we are, You're at, the, welcome. We are at the top. Thank Sean Hyde. He there you sent go. it to Oh, me. he did? Excellent. Thank you, Sean. Hey, our number one's in the books. We have barely scratched the surface and everything we want to talk about with everything going on with WrestleMania next weekend. We'll get to as much, if not all of it, in the second hour. We still have birthdays coming up. We still have a lot of stuff to do. You are watching Thoughts Can Anywhere with Matt, Chief, and myself, Aaron. We will be right back. Introducing everyone's arch nemesis, the struggle of the strain, the impurity of immunity, the throb of the job. He is past pain, anxiety, stress, tension. Introducing in your corner, don't pay for the hype for the packaging or the marketing. Quality is the only thing you should pay for. They are Planet Harvest Hell. 
Fight off your nemesis using premium handcrafted hemp wellness alternatives. Boost, workout, recover, relax, sleep, focus, repeat, and more. Planet Harvest Health is dedicated to creating affordable CBD products like gummies, lotions, recovery salve, and hemp seasoning blends and rubs. Visit planetharvesthealth.com forward slash TCA now for a limited time offer. And that's the bottom line because Aaron Phillips said so. What's up, man? It's your boy, Seth Fatu. I'm here with my man, Big Chief. I need you to check out the podcast, Thoughts Count Anyone. This is the essential character, EC3, on behalf of my dear friends at Thoughts Count Anyone. The podcast for your mind when you need deep thinking about all things sports and entertainment. Hello, this is Martin Kostaus, a.k.a. Marty the Mob, and you're watching Thoughts Count Anywhere podcast. Enjoy! <laughs> this is Impact Wrestling's Dash and Chris Bay, the ultimate finesse, former finesse division champion, and you're listening to Thoughts Count Anywhere podcast. Thoughts Count Anywhere. Y'all watching this. This is my new tag team partner, Steve O, aka Zoo, from the hit movie Friday, and from No Holds Bar. Hi, I'm Sean Tavari. Listen to Thoughts Count Anywhere for all your wrestling news. Hey, what's going on? This is Axe, and I'm smashing the demolition. And we want to invite you to watch every Saturday morning. Thoughts count. Oh, okay. Welcome back. Thoughts count anywhere. Hour number two. Chiefs now underway. Chiefs getting educated. Chiefs getting educated. Yes. All right. He's learning about wrestling on the television, not on the radio. (laughs) Yes. And no uh, sundial. All right, two things on Raw that we want on uh, WrestleMania. Speaking of which, what do you guys think of Kevin Owens coming out of Stone Cold this week? Music hit, and then out comes Owens in the skin cap and all of that stuff. What do you think? I turned it on and I heard the music and I was like, "Hell yeah, they're really doing this already!" And then Kevin Owens came out and I was like, "That's good. This is gold." I mean, he came and then with, when, like, the middle of it and Stone Cold music hit, and I was like, they're really doing this before WrestleMania? They had me going, like, real good. Right. And then he was like, hey, gotcha. I was like, oh, you're getting your ass kicked at WrestleMania. <laughs> Chief is excited for that segment of WrestleMania. So let's segue that. Right now it is being so re- ready for that. It is being reported that that is going to be the quote-unquote main event for night one. Now, as of right now, it's not being billed as a match, and we kind of went through this last week. You know, people buying tickets for one night, a match maybe the second night. Chief, though, brought up an interesting scenario before he went on the air. Could something possibly happen during SmackDown to change Saturday night's segment into an actual match versus Mm -hmm. it being a segment? Because to me, as much as I want to see Stone Cold in there, don't get me wrong, but to me, a a segment like that, if it stays as a talk show segment, uh, without some fisticuffs, some, some physical stuff, how is that possible to really be main event worthy, even though, it if, even though it is stone cold? I get it. That's definitely the giveaway if it's the main event of night one. It's then going to be some kind of beatdown or match or something to that effect. I think Stone Cold's said enough times that he's been training for a match. So hopefully it leads up on Raw that, like, Kevin Owens tries to, like, talk shit or whatever he does and then stone cold gets on the video thing and be like you know what you son of a bitch open up a can i'm whooping your ass saturday i think uh as as i said to aaron before we went on the air i think personally friday night kevin owens is going to show up on smackdown okay and Stone Cold is going to drive up from his home and they're going to have a to-do in the ring Friday night that will lead to the segment Saturday night and ultimately it's going to be the wrestling match. Yeah. And Stone Cold, you know, it'll be interesting to see. Will will Kevin Owens possibly get uh, beat down? Or is he going to? Oh, do, he has to. Or is he going to do the beat down? I, I 
The fact that, that Stone Cold has, quote unquote, given his approval for KO to do the stunner and all of that stuff is a passing of the torch yes. in a different way. Yes. In his home state, I, I can't see Stone Cold taking a, quote unquote, loss. Because really, if, if, even, if, even if Owens were to lose to Stone Cold in a match, does it really hurt Owens if he loses? No. No, it just gives him more heel heat to work with, doesn't it? At least I think it does. Yeah. Well, Sean, Sean brings up a good point. Night, night one, Cody interrupts Stone Cold and Owens. Segment eventually gets stunned by Owens and Austin. Welcome back to WWE. But would that hurt Cody for the second night in any way? If that were to happen, let's play that scenario out. <laughs> where the big rumor, et cetera, et cetera, is that he's going to face Seth on night two. Oh, really? That's, yeah. I'm, that, I'm asking. No, that's no, the no. rumor that that's been the speculation since okay. Seth doesn't have a match. Agreed. And Cody's coming, blah, blah, blah. blah. The rumor is that's going to be him and Seth on night two. So if that were to happen, let's play it because Cody's from Texas originally as well, right? With the family, with Dusty and everybody. Aren't they, they had Texas roots, yes? Absolutely. Well, Georgia, Son of a plumber. But, but I'm saying the family original roots was Texas, yeah. was it not? Yeah. Yes. So Cody coming out, I, I get that. Even if he just stands at the top of the ramp and does nothing would be something all into itself. But to then get in the ring and then get stunned by both of them, by two guys who've been going at it at the same time, what does that do for Cody the next night against Seth? Does it open up a storyline moving forward with Seth and Cody? Not Seth and Cody, but Seth and KO moving forward after Seth? Can I, get, can I give you my two? Here's, what's, here, here's my thought. Cody and Seth are going to tag team against Stone Cold and KO Night 2. Uh, I don't want to see that. Book it. I don't want to see Stone Cold on Night 2. If he's on Night 1, he's on, and I'll tell you why. People who are buying tickets, they're only expecting to be on Night 1 for whatever's going to happen. If I bought tickets for Night 1 expecting to see the segment, and then I find out that something happened that there's going to be an actual match the second night. Now, yes, it could drive ticket sales for night two. I get it. But I'd be, I'd be pissed off. Now, if I have tickets for night two and a match like that happens, I'm like, yeah, baby. Because guess what? They just moved the AJ Styles uh, edge match to night one because there wasn't enough uh, men's power enough match that they moved AJ and Edge over to night one. I'm not, say I'm not saying not have the match night one. KO and Stone Cold night one. They stun Cody, okay? We, we'll play Sean's scenario. Mm -hmm. Even though he says just kidding, by the way. No, no. <laughs> we'll, play, we'll play the scenario. He gets stunned by KO and, and um, Stone Cold, mm -hmm. okay? After that, Stone Cold and KO have the match. The match is over. Cody goes night two supposedly against Seth. Well, he doesn't. It's a tag team match. Him and Seth against Stone Cold and KO. There's nothing wrong with that. No, there isn't. There's but for the long okay. run. Well, no, no, but there's the nothing long, wrong with but it for because, the you know, the bottom line is you got to surprise the fans somehow, some way. And that would surprise me in the most disappointing way. I swear to God, I'll why? turn Peacock off. Why? Why? Well, you had the, you had that's for, the dumbest booking I think I've heard in forever. Why? I think the thing that puts in my and and I'm not saying it's a terrible idea, but one thing that puts a little fly in that ointment for me, you had Kevin Owens and Seth tagging for weeks and weeks and weeks on end. So they turned. So in that match, does that mean Kevin Owens is a face then? Whipped. I mean, Bookie was him, Stone Cold. Him and, and Stone Cold. Hell yeah. So does that mean KO at the end of something like that then stuns? Steve Austin, so he maintain then goes back to the heel. I don't know. It's it's that's what I'm saying. You weird-ass WWE it's, it's, writers, please do not listen to any of this. That's why <laughs> it is that, not. That's <laughs> that's why I'm saying it's a. You you have to surprise the fans a little bit. I'll cancel you know, Peacock. You know, you, as you say, you walk. We'll only talk about WWE AEW from here on. As out you if that happens. as you say, you walk in here, Cody and Seth. Okay. It ha you know, it, 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 it may, it may, it makes, you know, it just makes sense, okay? And it's before the event, okay? Seth's got, we've known for a month Cody's going to wrestle Seth. But if Cody comes back, okay, you want the biggest pop possible, 
You can't follow that with Stone Cold Steve Austin. Well, he's going to get a big pop. If he does the run in Friday night, he'll get a big prop Friday night. Cody is not going to be seen until WrestleMania. There's no way. Well, what the hell? It's called build-up, Matt. They are building it up the right way, no, not, they're not the goddamn tag team match. All they do, oh, well, he's, he's coming, he's coming, possibly. As I said last week, and I'll say it now, when he gets in the ring, we all know he's back at WWE. Right now, none of us know. It comes out on the damn dirt sheet, okay? Oh, he's signed with WWE. We don't know that. People inside the organization What's uh, a bigger of AEW who know yeah. him have confirmed that he's signed. What's uh, a bigger pop, no, though, coming out don't, like in the middle of Monday Night Raw or coming out I don't at give a shit if people from WWE announce bullshit. I want to see him in the ring. When he gets in the ring, then we know he's back at, at WWE. Tom Crawford. Not a tag team match. Tom Crawford. <laughs> asked, Why not? Tom Crawford Nobody asked, wants to see that but you. Tom Crawford <laughs> so? asked a question in the chat room about a rumor for Lashley versus Omos. That is the rumor if Lashley's cleared. We started discussing about if Lashley's not cleared, what would they do with Amos? But that is the rumor. Lashley was supposed to wrestle Amos at WrestleMania. Um, let's see. Omos almost went to WrestleMania. <laughs> Isn't he going? Only if he wrestles Lashley. If he doesn't Lashley. have Bobby Lashley, I don't know what the hell he's going to do. How, w- how would you book him? Who would you book him against? It'll probably end up being like a three-on-one match or how three jobbers against him. What's, what's the t- those two? Um, In a tag team match of what the hell's Darby it? Allen and Omos versus Nikki Bella and Brie Bella. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds as entertaining as that other tag match. Tom Crawford then follows up with a yeah, question. You're right. <laughs> He asked Absolutely. It, Tom asked another question. Is Cody, Butthead. Is Cody really that big a deal? Sean, Sean replies, Cody is a bigger deal than he was when he left. Why? Um, why? Sean has to answer that. I'm just reading well, I, the now I'm putting it out. Why? He has went from a mid-carter in WWE to like one of the top guys in yeah, because every he, promotion he's been in since. Because he bought into the damn company with AEW so he could do what the hell he wanted. Even before okay. that, he was like the Ring of Honor world champion. He was at the top of Impact. He was at the top of every promotion he touched. I think when he left WWE before he got involved with AEW, I think he, he presented a very different picture of himself in a way that like Matt Cardona, Cardona has been doing since he left WWE. When he left WWE, he was stardust. Correct? It's only up from there. Correct? Yes. No. He didn't do too much of Stardust, a in, year, in he, my opinion. He was about a year plus when he teamed okay. with uh, his brother. When, when he tagged with his brother, that made sense. Mm-hmm. But uh, as Stardust, he didn't do much in WWE. No. Mm-hmm. I'm being honest. And that's, that's and, what disgusted then, him at the end, I think. And then he went to AEW. Right. Correct? Mm-hmm. He went okay. to Impact and Ring of he went to. First. He, Right. Huh? He went to Impact and Ring of Honor first okay. before starting up AEW. Okay. Then they start AEW up. He bought, bought into the company. That's when he, in my opinion, that's when he started raising. Okay. Because he could do what the hell he wanted to do because he was part owner of the company. But then it came to light that they weren't happy with the way he was doing what he was doing. So they bought him out. So and now he's going back to WWE. So here's a couple of comments in response to your question. Thomas, uh, Thomas Burnett says, Cody reinvented himself after leaving WWE. Sean replies directly. He is the guy that left on his own terms, created an entirely new brand, ROH, NWA, world champion, and he helped build AEW. He made it on his own without WWE. I think yeah. that's the important and I agree, line right I there. I agree with that. That's Just the important like line right there. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, so I think that's the line right there is his last one. He proved that he made it on his own for three, four, five years, whatever it was after he left, doing all of whatever it was that he did, 
that he was able to do it on his own and not live on the name of the Rhodes last name. That's the yeah. point I was trying to get to. Right. Exactly. So that's what I think puts him in a different stratosphere or different level, at least coming back. It'll be interesting did, oh, to absolutely. see. Absolutely. No, no question. No and I hope, I hope he doesn't flop on his face. Will, <laughs> William says it will be the shocking return of Stardust. I, God, I hope not. <laughs> All right, real quickly, let's finish up some quick headlines still with, with the WWE report. Where are we at? Where are we at? WWE plans for the Raw after Mania will include lots of debuts, returns, and surprises. I think two names come out right away in my mind, and that would be Asuka and Bailey on the ladies' side. Yeah. Um, I, don't, I can't think of anybody else quickly off the top of my head that they can bring back off of injury. But the women's uh, lineup on that raw side, well, both sides, need some help in those two. I think is, we'll do it. Is Bailey, uh, is she close to coming back? Yeah, she looks like they're targeting her for coming back after WrestleMania. Uh, did you already say that? I did. I'm sorry. That's okay. I wasn't Seconds listening. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't listening. Big E had said, uh, had his first doctor's appointment after breaking his neck, and they said he was millimeters away from a stroke, paralysis, or death. That big neck of his saved his life because of all the muscles around him. Oh, yeah, definitely. If he wasn't, like, as built as he was and had that kind of fall, he wouldn't be here any longer. Let me, let me ask a question, please. Do you th feel that wrestlers... I want to... Uh, I want to... I don't know how I want to put it. Do you feel, res do you feel wrestlers are being as careful as they need to be in the ring these days with all the flippy shit that goes on and stuff like that and and you know i hate to see anybody get hurt in the ring all right period you know they're human beings but when you go up and you do that lift thing and you got a chance of hurting the back of your neck you know you're supposed the other your opponent's supposed to cover your neck when you do shit like that. And, um, you know, Ridge Howland, um, and I'll just, I, I, I just wonder if he was excited in the moment and just forgot to do it. But I don't like to see that happen. I just wonder if there's some training aspects that need to be going over again with professional wrestlers and i don't care if you've been in the business 20 years i i think there is some uh some uh upmanship to some degree for some wrestlers thank you i think there is and and you're right there the, listen the more high spots you do no matter what it is is going to increase the chances of somebody getting injured to some degree right yeah um so i i think it's only um a matter of time before we really see now if you're in big e's shoes just the way Triple H was just faced with a career decision. If you're, if you're Big E right now, do you risk even thinking about coming back into the ring when he's, quote, unquote, cleared three, four, five, however long it is down the line? That's a question. I mean, why, listen, it's a rhetoric question. We're not in his shoes. And I hope to God I never am in that, from that aspect. But what do you contemplate if you're Big E with, with missing it by, I mean, well, how thick is a millimeter? I mean, it's barely a, a piece of paper thick, right? Yeah. Of... of up to losing his life, let alone paralysis. I can see him coming back just because of the love for the business he has, but I see him changing up his ring style for sure. Mm -hmm. I, uh, like that dive he does out of the second rope to like the spear thing. I don't think he's ever going to do that again. Oh, hell no. I, I would hope and pray that um, he talks to Dr. Andrews, and Dr. Andrews is the one that has to clear him in order for right. him to go into WWE ring and the WWE is not held liable. So I hope common sense wise, um, if he can't be 100% as a wrestler should be going into the ring, in my opinion, and they're not, we know that due to injury. I hope he makes the right decision and uh, retires. That's my opinion. Andre the Giant Battle Royale. I know you guys and everybody's been clamoring for it, <laughs> which is usually a pre-show uh, match before WrestleMania. Will now actually take place the SmackDown that Friday before WrestleMania. Are you excited for the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royale? Maybe that's where Almost is going to win. 
you don't get anything for it except a trophy. I mean, what did it do for Cesaro? What, did it, what has it done for Corbin? A trophy the first and a photo op. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> hey, there's one. Who, oh, wait a minute. Who the hell's Corbin wrestling at WrestleMania? Some guy named Drew McIntyre? That's right. Damn. Scratch that. <laughs> scratch that. Scratch that idea. You really are not into WrestleMania this year, are you? No, I, I am not. Maybe we should have gone over the card. Well, we will next week, as you told me. You know, I was a week early, <laughs> and you right. said no. Well, it's next not on the week run sheet. We're, well, no, you said right. we're on next week. Right. Before we're on next week. Well, then that's put when it on we'll there discuss it. Maybe by then I'll be excited. I doubt it, though. Uh, Twitter message just came in from... Oh. Auscar at Just Auscar. Spontaneous WrestleMania trip to Dallas next week. Yep. Outstanding. Yeah. That's great. Have well, fun, brother. Have well, fun. Oscar, listen, I'm gonna we're gonna make you our special correspondent. The week after WrestleMania, call us and we would love to get an in-depth report from you. If you go what night are you going? Night one, night two, both. Let us know and uh, maybe we'll get you to call in and be a special correspondent for us. I was going to have my friend Jacob do that because he's going and he's going to like every single event in Dallas pretty much. Well, it's okay. We could do that too. Uh, okay. Sean Hyde puts a message in the chat room regarding the belly to belly on the outside is considered a high spot. Oh, he doesn't think it is. Dangerous, but that's a pretty basic move for two trained guys. This was just a one million occurrence in my opinion, but it wasn't a belly to belly. It was, just, it was an overhead suicide, wasn't it? Uh, no, he just grabbed him and... Flew him over his yeah, head. Yeah, it was like a belly-to-belly -belly suplex. It, well, done I think, like a billion times. Yeah, but when I think of belly-to-belly, -belly, I'm thinking of what Bailey does in her belly-to-belly -belly move to finish an opponent. That's the I can't lift a person over <laughs> my head version of the belly-to-belly, -belly, but the real belly-to-belly -belly is that one. Okay. Hey, Ben. Ben Bowman has just joined us in the chat room. Hey, All right. what's up, Ben? Real quickly. to Kentucky. Two other things uh, on our WWE report before we go to our final commercial for the show. Hurricane Helms, he announced he signed a Legends deal. I don't know what that means for him. Since and he then, feels old. It means he's old. Figures. It, means, <laughs> it really? means he's freaking old. Does that mean Just he, say it the way it is. Does that mean he tag teams now with uh, Nikki Ash? Um, all right. So we talked about AJ Styles and Edge. Interesting report came out in an interview that uh, uh, Ric Flair did on his own podcast, where he doesn't think Daniel Bryanson is as good as AJ Styles. Um, he's one of the greatest baby faces of all time. What's your thoughts on the comments made by Flair about AJ and about where Daniel Bryanson or Brian Danielson now stacks up to AJ? Baby face-wise, I can see it. AJ Styles is probably will go down as one of the best wrestlers to ever put on a pair of boots. He's so clean and good in the ring that Everybody that wants to come back wants to wrestle him. Like when Edge was out for 10 years, every single person that ever asked him, if you can come back right now, who do you want to face? The first words out of his mouth every single time was AJ Styles. Okay. Chief? I look at... Um, I'm going to talk so much shit in a second. What do, you got? what do you got? Take a dump? No, no, no. We're, oh. we're watching. We're, we're, uh, I saw I'm just looking at the stupid stuff coming on this teleprompter. Oh, okay. But that same comment by the same individual was actually just in the chat room, if you, and I chose to ignore it, quite frankly. I, I, uh, <laughs> I look at... Um, uh, oh, The Undertaker's driving the pace car tomorrow. At uh, the I look Rose. at Brian Danielson on AEW now, and it's interesting that William, Ringo, William Regal, who's one of the best technical wrestlers in the business when he got in the ring has said that Danielson's one of the best wrestlers he's ever trained and ever seen in the ring. So I, I'd say they're on even, even uh, ground. I, I wouldn't say one's better than the other. Um, you know, Ric Flair's entitled to his opinion. William Regal's entitled to his opinion. Um, you know, we know that Regal was a trainer. I don't believe Mr. Flair was. So, you know, I mean, you know, Daniel Singati start in ROH and uh, um, AJ got his start down in uh, um, Georgia. Uh, you know, both accomplished wrestlers, both good wrestlers. I, I, you know, I don't think one's above the other one, though. No. I would say AJ's 
slightly better than Daniel or Brian Danielson. Okay. If I had to pick one over the other. It just, I'm just flooding and watching the comments come up. They're going to be popping up on the screen regarding this topic. All right. If anybody wants to talk shit about our producer, though. Yeah, go ahead. Share the comment there that's is on a there. M- message on our teleprompter. That Which says, was in the chat room for anybody. I hey, just Prince of Pay, good morning, That sir. is right up here for this guy. He good says, morning, I watched Prince WrestleMania for Logan Paul and Johnny Knoxville. Who the hell Should said be cool. that? Some guy named Aaron Ellicus. The guy on the boards right there. You're fucking fired. <laughs> Logan Paul and Johnny Knoxville. They should have Logan Paul wrestle Johnny Knoxville at that point. On the pre-show of the pre-show. <laughs> in the parking lot. After, after, the after re- SmackDown. After SmackDown and the hall, and After the Hall of Fame uh, inductions after SmackDown as well. I could give two craps about the two of these guys being on. Logan Paul with the Miz and the Mysterios. Who can, you know, there, now, we, again, we go back to the conversation we've done for many years, where we talked about for many years, uh, about the um, taking spots. Jerry Pani, Panyanyan on Twitter says, Logan Paul and Johnny Knoxville will be wrestling at WrestleMania, and Baylor and Ricochet, who are both the U.S. and Intercontinental Championships, don't get anything for WrestleMania. Good, what, you know what, Jerry? Good point. Good point. Totally agree. Absolutely. Make that makes sense. And Especially with anybody. Ricochet getting a triple threat match Friday night for the belt against the two guys he against wrestled Against the this goof week. tag team of all people. And I want, I want to take a second here. All-time winners list of WWE Warrior Award. Connor the Crusher, Michalik, Joan London, Eric LeGrand, Jarius, J.J. Robertson, Sue Atchison, Titus O'Neil. Rick Herring, and this year will be Shad Gaspar. So there you go. That's all eight of them. From a topic an hour ago. That's just okay. Just bust I just, I, I don't <laughs> care. I got big balls. I'll admit it. No hey, problem. we're at the bottom of the hour of hour number two. We're going to step aside for our break, and then we're going to take it right to the top of the hour. We still have a lot to talk about. We got birthdays coming up and a couple other things before we sign off for this week. <laughs> Sean, Sean put in there two... two <laughs> Two. <laughs> Holy shit. Never mind. Valor and Ricochet are in the Andre. With that, we'll be right back. Battle Royale. Two future Hall of Famers. <laughs> One. It's not the worst podcast ever, is it? It's no. the best podcast. Thoughts count anywhere. All your wrestling news, all your hobbit you hey, all your gimmickry. Go on over, listen wherever your podcasts are downloaded. The Thoughts Count Anywhere podcast. I'm the big LG Doc Ellis. That's my endorsement. Booyah! This is John Cena. I just, I, just, I just wanted to send you a congratulations on your podcast, Thoughts Count Anywhere. Because indeed they do. Thoughts are important. I mean, what would they, we do without them? And how can they not count anywhere? I just, is there a place that thoughts don't count? I can't think of one. Well, I just wanted to say thank you very much, congratulations, and good luck on the podcast. Thoughts count anywhere, because they do. Introducing everyone's arch nemesis, the struggle of the strain, the impurity of immunity, the throb of the job. He is past pain, anxiety, stress, tension. Introducing in your corner, don't pay for the hype for the packaging or the marketing. Quality is the only thing you should pay for. They are Planet Harvest Hell. Fight off your nemesis using premium handcrafted hemp wellness alternatives. Boost, workout, recover, relax, sleep, focus, repeat, and more. Planet Harvest Health is dedicated to creating affordable CBD products like gummies, lotions, recovery salve, and hemp seasoning blends and rubs. Visit planetharvesthealth.com forward slash TCA now for a limited time offer. And that's the bottom line because Aaron Phillips said so. All right, welcome back. Oh, my goodness. Thoughts count anyway. <laughs> I thought it was Balor versus Priest at WrestleMania. Balor. I thought that was a WrestleMania match, too. It's, it should be. But I just saw while we were on commercial break, we're watching SmackDown from last night here in the... Well, we're watching. We have it on in this background. 
that the Johnny Knoxville Sami Zayn match is basically a no holds barred, anything goes kind of match. It means a whole jackass crew is going to get involved oh somewhere. Oh my god. If that's what I said. But freaking. I don't. They said there's only like ten matches for WrestleMania so far, have, uh, and there's supposed to be sixteen. So, do you, there's gonna be a lot of non-hype involved. Have you ever watched this show, Jackass? I have not watched a minute of it. I know what it is. I've watched every episode, and I watched a new movie yesterday. I I don't know anything about it. Sean at says. All. Sean says we need to stop talking about Logan Paul and Knoxville. They will both be in the WWE Hall of Fame one That's day. That's what I was trying to read when I cut in on you. I, if that happens, <laughs> if that happens, I'm burning my membership card to WWE. I mean, well, you, but then again, Drew Carey got in, so you know, I, I got to tell you something. Looking at the TV, you know, Paul Heyman don't look too good. He doesn't need to. He just carries no, no, the belt. No, I'm, no, I'm, I'm being, you think so? I'm being serious. He doesn't look good. What way does he not look good? It just his face. He just does not look good. It's a lot of red makeup on his face. No, All right, let's no, move no, on to no, the no, AEW no. Impact uh, report of news. Let's see what we got going. Where are we on going? Here. Impact. Well, all right. Yeah, we're they're continuing the storyline with Wardlow. They removed the, him from the roster page, continuing the storyline that he's actually employed by MGF, MJF, and not AEW. I hope it's a slow burn that we get that match at double or nothing. I'd love to see that live. That would be interesting. Me too. I like Wardlow. I like it. I, Luis, I, Luis, Luis, I'm sorry, Luis Mendez before he disappears from the screen. From Twitter, Luis Mendez says, WrestleMania used to be my second Super Bowl. Now it's the Oscars, and it's not because the Oscars suddenly got better either. That's good. <laughs> That's good. Thank you, Luis. Great, Louis, great Hey, Luis, you need to become a WWE writer, sir. That was excellent. Oh, my goodness. Do we know who's facing the bunny in the Owen Hart Cup on Wednesday? According, he's, uh, Thomas is asking that question. Hubcap. Anyway, Hubcap. Okay, so Wardlow, they're continuing the story. They removed him from the rosters page. So hopefully, maybe when AEW comes here, maybe the payoff, do you think? I think. I think like Tony, or like he'll be off TV for a couple weeks as MJF will be talking crap. And all of a sudden, Tony Khan will come out and be like, hey, do you want to check out my new signee? You're going to be wrestling him in a double or nothing. And then Wardlow comes out. That would get a monster pop. Interesting. That could be. It would be interesting to see how they do. Because they can't really keep that part of the storyline going all that long, can they? Oh, no. W- AEW is pretty good at long-term stories, so I can see him doing it. All right. King Shaq on Twitter also. At King Shack 57 says, I know the build up to this year's WrestleMania ain't been the best, but I'm still excited of it because it's fucking WrestleMania, the biggest event in WrestleMania. Thank you, King. Appreciate your comments. You know, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of truth in that comment, too. It's WrestleMania. Yeah. You know, sometimes we don't get the best matchups in Super Bowl, but we watch it because it's the Super Bowl. Well, you know, we bitch, we bitch and complain, you know, for so long we didn't have live shows and now we've now we're getting our live shows back so you know what yeah it, it, that comment makes a lot of sense um you know i may criticize wwe a whole hell of a lot but um it's time that they uh you know that we get back to the live shows and have fun whether we agree with it or we don't disagree with it. So there as much you go. I Absolutely. criticize the writers and the booking and whatnot. We're all still wrestling fans. Absolutely. Yep. So I'm always entertained by it either way. Even though you might like bitch and complain, it could be better. It's still entertaining TV when it comes down to it. Mm-hmm. And Absolutely. next year, even if we might be bitching, I bet you're all putting money down November to go to WrestleMania in Los Angeles. <laughs> exactly. I know I will be. Exactly. MJF said he will let his contract expire on January 1st of 2023 just to get a huge payday, whether it's Tony or from Vince. Who cares? He was saying that in a lot of interviews. He hasn't really said that much since the whole Cody thing. Right. So we'll see. So the only thing, the only thing before uh, them coming out here to wrestle, Wardlow and MJF, is uh, April the 15th, the AEW Battle of the Belts Rampage. Nice. In uh, Garland, Texas. So we may get Wardlow and MJF out here. AEW is in talks with Diana Perazzo. Yes. 
that's somebody they definitely need. She'd be she'd upgrade the women's division instantly. Uh, that's one of my hubcaps. <laughs> How the hell is she a hub? What's a hubcap to you? Don't worry about it. You 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 like criticizing me about who's, it, so who's not a hubcap? Uh, there's a lot of them. Serena Deeb sucks. Nick Yash. <laughs> what? <laughs> What the hell? Really what the game. hell did you say? Serena Deeb is garbage. I don't are know why the hell you always put are, her over. Are you shitting me? She has the personality of like. You know. Uh, you know what? There, there, I would love to see her. And I, I'm being serious now. I'd love to see her wrestle Charlotte Flair. That would be a fucking wrestling match. If you ever want to go to sleep, just watch a Serena Deeb promo. <laughs> hey, I'm not talking about promos, man. I'm talking about fucking wrestling. If you're that good, Get, you got to be good at both of them. Getting into wrestling. And you know what? She can teach them a hell of a lot. And you know gotta it. Got to be boring. And you yeah. know it. She's good at it. And you know it. You uh, know she can wrestle. She's a hubcap. What's that smile, not on, a good your, what's that smile on your face? I just want to see how bad I can get you going. <laughs> Leo on Twitter says, sorry, but no one can deny that Charlotte has always eight, eight, I don't know what that means when it comes to WrestleMania. Has always eight when it comes to WrestleMania. Okay? She's always good at WrestleMania. Right. And she, maybe she eats well in catering. Maybe he knows something we don't. I don't hey, know. let me ask you a question. <laughs> Seriously, guys. Yeah. We, is we, we, know, we know how many, you know, we know Fabulous Moore's record as a, I knew this as a, women, as a women's champion. Okay. It's in today's boring, today's modern wrestling, do you feel that Charlotte Flair is the best women's wrestler in the business today? Today? Yes. I, I would have to say, if gun were to my head, I would have to say yes. Yes, and all-time best, yes. I'm gonna in, really in this, in the, no, no. In this year, I'll agree with you. But back in the day when it was different, she she, she wrestled she would rings be, around Mula she, and she would be one of the best wrestlers. Okay, there's no doubt about it. But be, but today, I really feel that she is out of all the women in professional wrestling, she's the best. I'm sure Charlotte can go to the headlock generation and just rule everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, th I mean, that's that's how I look at it, and. Uh, She'd be the best on the radio so. and high-definition television <laughs> and everything in between. <laughs> AEW trademarked the name AEW Fight Forever for their upcoming video game. Yes. Interesting name. Yes. Uh, let's see. Another video. Paige Van Zant wants to wrestle for AEW in the next couple of months. Double or nothing. Bring Could it. be, right? Who, Bring who, would she, it. who would she face? It'll probably be Scorpio Sky and her versus... Britt Baker and Adam Cole. No, it'll be uh, Sammy Guevara and Tay uh, Conti. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to. I, I would. I would much rather see Britt Baker and Adam Cole, though. Per True. Personally, I think that would be a good match. <coughs> <laughs> Fandango's Chief, retiring, huh? Chief likes hubcaps for when he invented the wheel. <laughs> Who the hell said that? Our producer. It's on the teleprompter behind the laptop. I can't see. No, it. I know. I purposely have it hidden from you. <laughs> anyway, yes, Han Dong Go stated in, in an interview yesterday that he will probably retire, be retiring from the ring very, very soon. Yeah. Bad taste in his mouth with everything that has happened. I don't I, know. I thought he was going to wrestle for that new upstart he is. company. The C, uh, control your narrative. He's yeah. got something going on with them, but I think short. Some, he says sometime soon. Oh, okay. In the next two months. Yeah, within the next couple of months. So, um, anyway, let's see. Fandango is that. Okay, Chelsea Green turned on Mickey James, and Matt Cardona laid out Mickey with radio silence. Laying out the must was that his radio silence? That's his finisher. Laying out their match next weekend of Chelsea and Matt taking on Mickey and Nick Aldis. That's gonna be some good shit. Where are they doing that? Where's that match? Uh somewhere in Dallas. It's on their regular show, right? Or is uh, it? I don't know if it's for Impact or NWA or gotcha. what it is. Gotcha. I wanna right. see it. By the way, Jennifer, our friend in Hawaii, says, Chief, you're awesome. Thank you, Jen. Hey, the wrestler of the day, 
Angelo Savoldi. Why did you give him that earlier in the show? Nope. <laughs> Nope. That sounds nope. an electrician you should probably check like the Better Business Bureau for. AEW <laughs> names faction of Regal, Danielson, and Moxley as the Blackpool Combat Club. I can get behind that. Adam Cole stole Adam Page's championship belt. <laughs> How many times does that happen on TV? Somebody steals the actual belt All from the somebody, time. right? Nyla Rose attacked Thunder Rosa, setting up her next feud. That should be interesting. Um, I got comments for that, but please. it would get us freaking canceled. Let's so I'm just going to keep it to myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thoughts on the Jeff Hardy spot? Was that where he came off and crashed into the table on somebody that I saw on uh, social he, like, media? He climbed the freaking wall. And... But it didn't look like it was a clean landing, though. He was, uh, it looked like he was a little off. He was a little, a little short. off, and there was like a bunch of boxes under it. So. I saw that. I saw that. It looked really cool, though. He was trying to get his first holy shit moment in instantly. Thomas Burnett shares uh, the Impact Multiverse of Matches is where that mixed tag team is going to ma- uh, going to take place. Sean Hyde says, Chief, next week bring a hubcap to throw at the producer. I, uh, I think I will. There you go. Tony Khan says he puts on pay-per-views better than anybody. Thoughts? As long as there's a thing called WrestleMania around, that's a far-fetched comment. Mr. Angelo Savoldi. Go for it. 99 years old. Started out WWE, tag team partner of Lou Albano. Oh, um, the captain. He was, he was one of the original tag team partners of Captain Lou. Uh, great trainer with WWE. Knew how to work in the ring. And uh, just a little education. He's from Parsippany, New Jersey. We don't say Parsippany. We say Parsnippity. Parsippany, New Jersey. That's right. That's where he's from. Right on. The state where you put the enema in the United States of America. Only the northern part. <laughs> southern part's nicer. <laughs> Tony Khan teases about a new female talent who will debut at Dynamite in the first round of the Owen Cup against the Bunny. There's a lot of, there's a lot of free agents out there. Who are you guys suspecting? Who do you think? I hope it's Athena, a.k.a. Ember Moon. Diana. Interesting. There's a lot of good names out there for oh, yeah. female wrestlers. Hubcap or not. Hubcap or not. <laughs> yeah. A lot hey, of cars where, don't have hubcaps my girl, anymore. Where's my girl? Is my girl from uh, WWE, is she still signed with them? Who? The one you always bust my balls about. Eva Marie? Yeah. No. Oh, if it's her, oh my God, still, I will no, die. No, she's not. Team. She's not. She's, she's, not, out, she's, not, she's not signed with WWE. Movies. She's filming movies now. She's, is she a free agent? Yep. Technically, yes. Oh, if it's your favorite, you're going to watch AEW permanently. <laughs> you, Liz, if you're listening, you better, you better keep bricks away from him if he does, so he doesn't throw him at the TV. He's like, I hate her. She's the worst. Where's TNT? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Before we get into some pop culture. Uh, yes, sir. Tom Crawford Happy says, birthday to you. Tom Crawford says Memorial Day weekend here in Vegas is going to be huge. AEW, Happy. Double or Nothing, plus their regular show Friday night, FSW, GCW, and any others that long holiday weekend yeah okay uh it's happy time for birthdays happy Mr. birthday Mr. to Producer. you i tried to lead him into you, you it you did and i appreciate that three times i said happy chelsea birthday. from the twitter machine says i love how wwe would just randomly make wrestlers turn evil okay i don't know if that's in relation to the evil uh series that we you and i were talking about early on if you have access to the peacock network and you go under wwe WWE Evil, at least the first three episodes that I've seen, uh, have been very good. Ric Flair is another upcoming episode. Roman Reigns, I don't remember who the others are. But it's an in-depth look as to how someone got into wrestling initially, and then the backstory is how their characters evolved into becoming the evil. They missed out on the greatest episode of Evil they could have made. Which one was that? The Big Show. They would have had so many. If they would have tried to explain... How he turned heel and face 90 billion times <laughs> in his career. I want to hear that explanation. Oh, my goodness. All right. <laughs> Birthdays. If you're celebrating a birthday today through next Friday. Well, next Friday is April Fool's Day. Happy birthday to you. Did you really? Happy April Fool's Day Happy next Friday. Happy birthday to you. And we have a couple of people born in that day that are certainly not fools by any stretch. No, All right. they're not. 
Today, uh, tomorrow, we don't have any birthdays today on March 26th. No birthdays, 26th. nope. So no, that means it was a slow day last, you know, last nine week. Months, nine months right. ago, it was kind of dry last out week, there. Last week, we had eight on one day, That's so right. the 26th, they took off. That's right, but then nine months prior to that date and all the years must have been, like Matt said, very dry months. Anyway, yes. March 27th, Charlie Haas and SoCal Vow. March 28th, Mr. Perfect, Umaga, the aforementioned warlord, and Mustafa Ali, who's busy doing stuff on social media. Still not signed by anybody. Nope. Uh, or no, I'm sorry. He's still with, with WWE. He was not granted his release. March 29th, Michael P.S. Hayes. March 30th, Mike Rotunda, also formerly known as IRS, for those of you who remember, Erwin R. Scheister. Watch episode 100. Zach, there you go. Zach Gowan. Trent Beretta, Sadie Gibbs. Any relation to Andy? I don't know. Okay. And on April Fool's Day, April 1st, I'm purposely leaving the first name second, Jesse Sirenson and the Viper, who hears voices in his head, Mr. Randy Orton. Happy birthday to all of you out there. Happy birthday that you're hearing, courtesy of Pocket Aces and our friend over there at Rob Goldstein and Company. We appreciate it. By the way, I, I don't remember the story behind this. Maybe one of you read it. Randy Orton at WrestleMania will be reaching yet another milestone in his career with something happening at WrestleMania, and oh, I yeah, don't he's recall. He's like the first person to walk into WrestleMania with the WWE Championship, World Heavyweight, Intercontinental, U.S., and now the tag belts. Okay, there you go. So, excellent. So, the man continues to rack up I was honors. just looking on Facebook. It's John Rankin's birthday on tomorrow also. John Rankin, happy birthday, bud. Happy birthday to all of you celebrating a birthday this upcoming week. Uh, Thomas Burnett suggests Big Show just needs to do a shoot interview on as many turns alone. Oh, yeah. Did you, that could be a hundred part. Did, did you hear the one today on, uh, on um, the show we listened to Busted driving on uh, Busted Open about... Uh, We're charging him for every time uh, we say those words. About Big, uh, about big Show. Mm-mm. Did you hear about that? Mm-mm. What they want to do is they want to make Big Show into, uh, uh, you know, his his stick in uh, Water Boy. What was that? The Captain Inferno. Okay. They want to. They yeah, Captain Insano. They want to make him Captain Insano, and then they're going to tag him with uh, uh, Dan Housen. <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. Sean says... Could you imagine that? No, I, I Hell can't. yeah. Big Show would have been released more times than Drake Maverick if he was wrestling today, <laughs> which is funny. <laughs> could, you, could you imagine him and Dan Housen, though? I don't want to. kind of funny. I, maybe a one-off and something know, like Captain that. You know, Captain Insano doing his... Yeah, I know. You but know, and then Dan Housen doing the... Uh, trying to do the... Uh, uh, trying uh, to curse people? Yeah, thank you. That's what I was trying to say. See, I get all excited and I forget what the hell I say sometimes. <laughs> and then sometimes I don't listen. And then sometimes I want to take my teeth out. Well, please don't. Only when, when uh, Otto's here, you, you get permission to do that. Oh. Hey, speaking of, which, speaking of which, Otto is uh, performing downtown in, uh, every Tuesday night at uh, one of the comedy clubs downtown. Every oh, Tuesday night he's performing. Okay, you don't know the club? I do not, but I will have it have that answer for for you next week. Okay. I didn't realize he did stand up comedy too. Yes. Was he trying to follow uh Ziggler and, I don't Mickey, know. and uh Mick Foley? And I don't have geez. any idea, sir. He's a perfect type for that. Oh he is so quick witted sure. it's not funny. That's All right. a, that's my boy. Let's go into he's funny, that's the whole point of being a stand up comic. I know. <laughs> 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 exactly. All right, let's get into some pop culture. Wait, okay. Tyreek Hill traded to the Dolphins. Interesting football move. Is that as big for the Dolphins as uh, uh, the guy that the Raiders got from Green, uh, Green Bay the week before? A lot of pressure now on Tua as the quarterback down to Miami. I was going to say, it kind of sucks for Tyreek Hill. For like the, it's good for the payday, but when you have like a mediocre quarterback, and you're a wide receiver. It makes your job a lot harder. He's Devontae Adams. He's got Derek Carr. Derek Carr's never had, like, a really core group around him right. to, like, be a good team. But with, like, those two together, it might be a dangerous combination. Well, they were also together in high school. College. I, I meant college. Sorry. Yes, they were, they were teammates in college as well. 
Uh, if you can find that clip, you, uh, you, 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 you got it. You, okay. meant, you meant college, but you said high school. I know. I know. What I said the hell's school. up with that? I have you, no idea. You, you, you get on my I ass you, all have, the time. I know, but I have to make you look better. If I mess up, you look better. Uh, <laughs> I don't care. On your screen is the <laughs> QR code. <laughs> <laughs> on the screen is your QR code to our sponsor, Planet Harvest Health. Check it out. Why? Because if you scan that, follow the link. TCA 25, you get a 25% discount on your order from those folks. And VIP status, any order over $60 will be shipped to you for free. So if you want to improve your health, you got sore joints and everything that you've seen on the commercials, or maybe you want to sprinkle it in some of your food, they have seasonings as well. Just scan that code. 25 Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bam! 25% off and free shipping on orders over $60. So that was Amber Lagasse. Bam! Right. Yes. Amber Lagasse. Taylor Hawkins of the Foo Fighters passed away yesterday. I'll That's crazy. How old was he? 50. 50 years old. Jesus. What was the cause of death? Do you they haven't announced anything yet. There is. Foo Fighters is like one of my favorite bands. So that was he was the some original crappy drummer, news to hear, yeah. Wow. The original. He was also the drummer for Alanis Morissette, and he had like his own band, too. Wow. And Mr. Producer, did you have something there to... That's a shame. Okay, we'll get... To, yes, yes. We, so it's not on the... Uh, so uh, thoughts and prayers go out to uh, the Hawkins family yes. and all the Foo Fighter fans from all of us here. Um, <laughs> Thomas Burnett says, David Carr did have Amari Cooper. Who? Amari Cooper. He, he was from uh, Alabama, I believe. Yeah. Then went to Dallas. Okay. And uh, off the top of my head, I, I don't remember where Cooper just got traded to. Um, okay. Wow. So I, saw, I saw the headline on this. I didn't watch the video. but Why not? Elon Musk, we all know, is the founder of Tesla, okay. right? the electric cars, and he's the boring company doing the underground stuff oh, here in Vegas. That's the guy. That that's Liz, the dude. Liz has got stock in Tesla. Oh, does she? Yeah. Is she rich? Uh, How many pieces she, of stock does she have? She's uh, doing she's well. She's okay. So she she's, could retire if she let, wanted let's to. Let's put it this way. If I got one foot in the grave now and the other one goes in, she's going to be fine. Oh, gotcha. Cooper, is, uh, Amari Cooper's in Cleveland, who just got also their big quarterback this week in Deshaun Correct. Watson. Correct. So Probably apparently, play half the season. Every, exactly. Say again. Well, but I saw this morning though the NFL is not is not necessarily looking at suspensions for him, uh, so he might play. Who? Uh, Deshaun Watson, the quarterback from from uh, Houston. That well, had, if they if they didn't they uh, didn't they. Um, they were going to try him a second time, and, well, all and the, they so, said no. All the criminal lawsuits, as far as what I see so far, that have been presented have been dismissed. Okay. So the only thing that's left are not the civil cases. But again, you still have to prove, yep. even on the civil standpoint, uh, yes. from that. So from a yes. criminal standpoint, all charges at this point, from what I read, the grand juries in Texas or whatever, have all, they're not moving forward with any criminal charges at this point. Okay. But uh, Tesla... Yes. Great mileage, great cars. A lot of people believe uh, in them. I worked for them for a couple of months. It was a job that you have to be very young at doing with all the hours they expect. But apparently Tesla's fly, too. Did you know that? Yeah, they're going to go huh? to the moon. Yeah, they, well, that's a whole different thing that he does. Uh -huh. yeah, but that's not him. That's, uh, what's his face, Virgin, uh, what's his face? Richard, Richard Branson. Richard Branson. Yeah. But apparently Teslas are trying to fly, and I believe we have a video queued up of what we are referring. So check this out. Now was that was that uh, was that like a stunt that was being filmed or obviously that well obviously it looks like San Francisco all those hills. You know, you know it was what? LA. It you was in LA. It was like one of the YouTubers or Everyone something. Somebody was taking credit for it. Wow. You, I didn't. That counts oh. and that counts anywhere. You know that. That counts anywhere. That's anywhere. right. Yep. Thoughts can everyone is no, 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 no. It counts anywhere. Not thoughts can anywhere. It counts anywhere. Okay. What counts anywhere? That's what. That's <laughs> the point I'm making. I didn't know L.A. had streets like that. I, you see streets like that. I always think of them being in San Francisco. So does San Diego. I remember going to like San Diego Comic Con, and me and my friend got lost because we like drove over there. I went like to the street, and it was like the gas station's on the bottom of this hill. I legit stopped at the top of this street and I was like, I don't even see the fucking bottom. <laughs> we were literally going straight. I was more terrified. You were, I'll bet you, you were in Benita, which is one of the suburbs outside of uh, San Diego. <laughs> I think my butt unclenched like six months later. 
That's, uh, yeah. Jesus. You, it, oh, my it's, gosh. It's, it's, it's really not, not hard to get around in San Diego, but if you get <laughs> off of where you're g off the main roads and you don't know where the hell you're going, you can get lost very easily. That street that we just saw is a street in Echo Park near Glendale. Glendale. Sean says in the chat room, he says, Liz is making that Tesla money and Chief is on a budget? Yep. <laughs> you know it. You oh know my, my wife. Hey, Chief, you want to sponsor your own podcast? <laughs> <laughs> you, you know. No, no, we got to go to Liz, not Chief. You, yeah. you know my wife very well. That's right. Her, her and your mom, man, they used to run the streets together, brother. And Sean uh, also says in relation to that Tesla car, it was a perfect landing. I mean, thank God, like, all four tires, even though there was a little bounce, per se, and a little comeuppance on the back, it didn't flip, it didn't roll. Here we go. Her able to drive after the movie and actually test it. But the lithium batteries yes. that go into Tesla, she's got stock in that company too. Liz, if you're adopting for children, I am available. Just ask my wife. Um, okay, interesting. But that kind of video to show how the car can uh, can take a landing. Too many stories do come up though about cars catching fire because of the batteries, yes. and you know yes. there are some downsides yes. to it, but. Nonetheless, it's a very successful car, uh, all makes and models. And in, and in this day and age, my gas station by my house went from 483 to 503 in the span of a day. And then now it's up to over 530 in two days. Oh, shit. Yeah. Speaking of so, shitty cars, no, don't man, buy a Kia. Go, 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 go Craig, Craig, Craig and Commerce on, uh, over by me. 483. Yeah, but I'm going to spend more money in gas just to get well, to the station and then coming, burn it back. When you're coming that way. I don't go that way. Why not? Cuz I why, that's You you can go you can come down Craig Road and get on the 15. That's true. I can't do that. You're, so you're right. it's not out of your way. Not that far. When I go visit my girlfriend. My mom bought a Kia way. last year. What kind of Kia? Yeah. Kia Soul, like the okay. little oh, hamburger the looking car. They're nice. Yeah. I, There's shit. Really? My this thing's got like 8,000 miles on it. And we went to dinner like last week and she was like, the car's making like a funny noise. And I was like, it's also leaking. Take it to Kia tomorrow. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. They called her like two days later and I was like, you need a whole new engine. Holy crap. But it's, war it's under warranty. It's under now. warranty. So they're going to give her a rental for like a month Jeez. next week. But a car with 10,000 miles on it already needs to replace like the whole thing. Probably made in, no disrespect, probably made in China. Well, the Kia product is Them not damn a damn 10-year-olds making engines need to stop. <laughs> So I got a story. To, I got a story to coattail that same type of scenario. Oh, well, give it to us. When early on in my marriage, my wife and I we lived in Homedale. Yes. And we traded. She had a Cavalier Z24 Sport. The sports car was beautiful. Chevy but we were, Cavalier. Oh, but it was the sport model. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two door the black. Hatchback. No, yeah. no, 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 no. It was a two. And it was not a hatch. It was no? a trunk. Oh, it was a sports right. car. It flipped up that way. So yeah. we were getting ready to plan for our kids. So we knew that was not a feasible car. So we decided we traded it in for Nissan Sentra at the time. That's a good car, too. Not the one I drove off not the no, lot. No. Really? That night, my wife and I, we went out for dinner. You know, we're sporting around the new car. I'm at a red light. I'm ready to hit the gas. Hit the gas. I go nowhere. Called the tow company. This was on a Sunday night, no less. Was it Saturday a stick? Night. No, it's all, I don't drive automatic. Stuff. All automatic. So it wasn't PS the clutch. gets there, okay. right? Next day we get a call from the sales rep. You ready for this? The manifold was not secured on the car. It was missing a bolt. Nice. So they said we can just repair it, and, and I said no. I said I want a brand new car. I'm not going to take a car where you just have to put a bolt in. For all I know, that bolt can slip out again for some reason. You're going to get me a brand. We're talking about a car that barely had a hundred miles on it. So just because we buy a brand new car, unfortunately, doesn't mean that we're not going to have issues with it. But sure. your, your story with, your, with that, now my daughter, on the other hand, before she moved to Virginia, we bought her a Kia Sportage, uh, the mini SUV, but it was pre-owned. It was like, it's like a 2009. I'm knocking on all the wood that I can find. It's been doing great for her. That's good. 100,000 miles. She gets it every 3,000 miles. We all change the whole thing, and it's been lasting, and it's been doing her very well. They, uh, nice. they um, talk about it. I was always told you don't buy, if you know the codes to look on the doors, 
you never buy a car Monday or Friday. Really? Yeah, because Monday they're coming back to work and they're ah, still hung over, and Friday sure they're looking forward to the party. There weekend. you go. So I didn't know that. That's what I understand. Hey, as we wrap up this edition of Thoughts Count Anywhere, as we get ready for WrestleMania show next week, coming up at the top of the hour, yours truly will be hosting Aaron Zauer with Aaron Phillips. My guest this week is a gentleman by the name of Chuck Granada. He is a radio record producer, author, music historian, and archivist. He has written books about Frank Sinatra. He's, he did a show on Sirius Radio with Nancy Sinatra. I've got him coming on. And then sometime in that uh, interview, Rose Kingsley would be joining us to talk about a project that the three of us have going on regarding the music of Johnny Mercer. So if you like classic music from that era, be sure to join me at the top of the hour. Thoughts count anywhere for this edition's In the Books. Final thoughts, Mr. Matt. Have a stupendous week. <laughs> stupendous. Holy shit. Where'd you, where you must have looked in the Funk and Wagnall Dictionary for that one. Or watched WWE in the last month. <laughs> Mr. Chief, final thoughts as we say goodbye. Hey, our girl over in Hawaii says that her last three cars have been Nissan Sentras, and they're great, just well, so we know. I'm sure, though, she's gotten newer models than the one that I was purchased 30-some-odd years ago. No, well, you're old. I know. Uh no, any, everybody uh, have a good week. April Fool's to you. And uh, um, you still have your Flintstones car? Yeah. Okay. And just uh, just have a great time. And he time. runs it with his toys, with his toy stick. <laughs> I got too. the sundial on the front of it to, to direct me. <laughs> Love you all. All right, with that, we want to thank you all for watching. Next week, we're going to have our WrestleMania picks, the whole shebang, everything that's going on. Be safe on April Fool's Day. That is Friday. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in an hour. But as always, be kind to everybody. Wives that we're all we have. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We'll see you next time right here on Thoughts Count Anywhere.